Zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like CAP, zapping all you hoes away like. So like we were talking and one girl was like, look, I'm just going to say it. I did meth like four days ago. Do you <laughs> think that that's going to affect it? And we were like, I don't know. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Tell me again. Hey, y'all. Can we be lovers and friends? Ooh. Um, tell me again. Hey! Listen, y'all. I'm so sorry I'm late. I am, what, three minutes, four minutes late? Listen, I'm drinking my trusty celery juice. And girl, Miss Celery Juice got to stalk it in my stomach. I said, oh, I gotta handle this before I go live because there is no way, ain't no way in my Whitney Houston voice. Ain't no way, ain't no way. Oh, oh. There ain't no way that I was gonna be able to get through this live with my stumbling. Yes, my stomach doing stumbling, fumbling, trick or treat, and Halloween tricks in my stomach. It just, you know, I had to just press eject right fast, and then I had to come to y'all. I had to ham, ham down right fast. <laughs> How are you guys doing? What's going on? I haven't seen you guys in a couple of days, bitch. I've been busy. I've been trying to tend to my clients. Y'all know I do have a whole job slightly over here. I had to tend to my clients. I had to tend to some stuff for the show that's coming out on the fourth. I had to tend to. Just tend to, had to clean the house, do laundry. I haven't done laundry like in two months. I had to clean clothes, had to get myself together. But anyways, we are back here today for another ANTM Twin exclusive with Sarah from Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model. Where is the bitch at? Where is she? Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Sarah. Sarah. Miss Sarah. Sarah. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Okay, let me do a little intro. What's going on? My name is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie, reporting for duty, here to do the Lord's work. What's up, God? I have the distinct honor of speaking to TikTok royalty, ANTO alum, Sarah from Cycle 9 of America's Next Top Model. We have been talking about this for months. So every time I see y'all in the comments, when you gonna talk to Sarah? When you gonna, I'm just like, shut the fuck up and be patient. I'm on the way, goddammit. But we are talking today and I'm so happy. And um, without further ado, I'm just gonna like bring her on in. Sarah! Hi! Hi! Oh my god! How Hello. are you? It's I'm wearing your shirt. Huh? I'm wearing the shirt you sent me. Oh my god! Yay! Oh, it looks so good! Care? Oh god, I should have I should have worn that. That would have been smart. Then we would have been twins. Ah, uh, happy birthday! Care about something other than yourself. <laughs> I said I made that shirt. Well, I made that shirt because I just wanted a cool dare shirt. But then I was like, I need a reminder to get my head out of my own ass sometimes. So I made it for myself. <laughs> well, thank you so much. When You're I so welcome. I was doing my um my PO box opening video, and I was going through them, and I was reading the packaging, and I'm like. 
I feel like this is from Sarah. I feel like <laughs> this is from Sarah. I feel like it's a, when I messaged you, I was actually filming it at, the, at that time. And I was like, is this yours? You were like, yes, it's mine. I was like, okay, yes, Yay! great, 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 great. So yes, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody else who sent me cool things. I did the video. I just have to edit it. I'm going to upload it this week. But thank you to everybody who sent me like really, really nice stuff. I actually like teared up a little bit because it just meant a lot to me to get so much love. Did you have a good birthday? I did. Uh-huh, I did. You've had a week. You've had a, like, I can't. Are you dead? Are you exhausted? Do you need a nap? <laughs> right? Should we just, you know what? Let's just live stream a nap. That's all. Yes. <laughs> I did, um, I did Corey and Nina's podcast. I did another top model pot, um, a and I, Wait, I want to make sure I say it right. I think it's either top model rewinds. That's my first answer. But if it's not top model rewind, it's a and rewind. But I'm leaning more towards top model rewind. My, Okay. Memory's a little funky. But I did their podcast this week. So, yes, I was tired. I was like, oh, girl. And you all had a video come out, which is amazing, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank the you. The other day, you. I was drinking water, and I was like, Camelback. <laughs> yes, that is so <laughs> like, good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, how are you doing today? You I'm look good. fabulous. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm good. Yeah. Also, you know, tired, but have not done nearly as much. But, you know. It's mm -hmm. a pandemic. Are we? Are you freezing? Are you? Is it cold in Atlanta? It's or cold as shit. Cold? Yeah, I Atlanta was one of the last places I went before everything shut down in, yeah, I guess February of last year. Oh my god, that was a year ago. Um, yes, ma'am, Miss Sarah, it is cold. And it was cold. I brought like swimsuits and stuff because the hotel had a pool that we, we were. I was um, I was there on the road for work for for shows and stuff. Yeah, brought a pool, like brought a bathing suit. We, I had one jacket that I'd come in, um, and like one sweater. Uh huh. <laughs> we were so all of us. It was a there was a group of us. I work for a, a, a group called Abortion Access Front. We used to do shows all over the country, and uh, yeah, we were all free. <laughs> and listen. locals were like, "It's not Florida. Like, where did you think you were coming?" And I was we were right. Like, I'm actually going to Florida in a couple of weeks, and I'm like, I got to get away from this this coldness because it's aggravating. Like, it's getting on my nerves. Oh my God, my knees are like so cracked and drying and falling. <laughs> oh like, it's, God, Jesus it's yeah, um, yeah. NYC, right? Yeah, I'm in New York. Yeah, wait, hang on. I want. Oh, can I? Yeah, here we go. This is out my window right now. That's a heat oh. lift doing nothing. I see colors change in the wind. Yeah. Um. Oh, someone said I look like a pinup right now. Thank you so much. No, you do. You I'm do wearing wear pinup pajama bottoms on the bottom. <laughs> I'm that cute up top because it's that's that's the 2021. Yes, guy. yes. Yeah. Well, I'm wearing again. Sarah, talk about this shirt and all the things where they can get this shirt. Oh, so that's uh, that's my merch. It says care about something other than yourself. Um, which I realized, like I realized, I was sending that to to you, and I was like, I hope he doesn't think I'm being a bitch. Um, uh, but. I made it as a reminder for myself uh, to care about something other than myself. And then there's also other shirts. Um, it's just it's just an Etsy shop. But every time I like I think of a funny idea, I make a shirt and I put it up there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there's one that say I have underwear that says anarchist jurisdiction um, because Trump said New York was an anarchist jurisdiction, and I was like, yeah, so is my pussy. Um, <laughs> Um, and I want to get ones that say uh, anti foot <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, um, cause that Mike Lindell guy, the My Pillow guy, he like was meeting with Trump and he said that the the Capitol riots were from anti foot temptress. And I was like, that's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, and he said we hid psychoactive drugs up our vaginas. And I was like, yes, accurate. <laughs> Yo, have I met someone who has a worse mouth than me? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it's not good i actually was watching uh before this i was watching jenna's because i talked to her about it but i hadn't actually seen it and i heard her go oh fuck and i was like oh good oh good okay we can swear oh, oh yeah was, yeah you can swear just don't say the c you don't say the c word that rhymes with blunt because it's something about that c word that oh. instagram does not like that makes sense ask me how i know no <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. No, I will not. I will not. I'll try. I'll try and, you know, I'll try and be good. Um, but you can say fuck, goddamn, pussy shit. 
you know, all those words are fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, this is so exciting. I'm so nervous, but it's 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 gonna be good. Yeah. Okay, so listen, I'm just going to jump right into it, if you don't okay. mind. Yes. Tell yes. us, Sarah, what made you audition for America's Next Top Model? So, um, two things. Uh, one, you know, you know when you, like, your freshman year of college, when you, like, make that group of friends that you think is going to be your best friend, like, you make them mm -hmm. in, like, orientation, and you think they're going to be your best friends, but it turns out they're uh -huh. just, like, your first friends, mm -hmm. and then you meet your real friends later. So... I was at a party and it was like that was happening and this one girl was like um who i didn't actually even know that well she was like oh my god do you want to try out for top model with me like we'll go you go at like five in the morning um and and then you wait in line for like hours and i was like um standing in line for five hours in boston winter yes absolutely let's do that because uh -huh. i was a little drunk um and, uh, and i was like that sounds like such a good idea absolutely let's do that and this was like you know at the very beginning of the year um and obviously i immediately forgot about it i was mm -hmm. like yeah let's absolutely we're gonna do that we're definitely gonna hang out for mm -hmm. now um but then like it came up and one of my actual who is still one of my best friends was like okay but you should really try out like you could really be on it and i was like no she mm -hmm. didn't even want me to try out she just wanted me to come like support her and he was like no you should try out like and i was like no definitely no because i have been i've been like curvy since i was like 11. so no one had ever said like no one had ever said you should be a model to me like in my life that was not like a thing one creepy guy on a train but like who cares so like so i was like no i definitely can't try out like i'm not a size two it's not a thing um so uh so then january like i guess december whenever the auditions were they rolled around it was winter in boston mm -hmm. it's like five in the morning and she calls me up and is like are you ready and i was like who is this <laughs> and so we like we went she, it might have been the day before but we went uh -huh. and the, as crack of dawn i like i didn't even bring heels i like had i just like I'd, I'd seen the show but like a couple times like you know uh -huh. like watching with my friends and stuff and um i absolutely will do the nose trick again if i can find a piece of paper um i was gonna ask you about that <laughs> so so we went and we tried out and um and then i got a call back and she did not um and then we had a real awkward train ride back to bu <laughs> <laughs> i bet now let me ask you this did you just cover it sounds a little muffled hey tyra hey bitch. oh you know what I we bind you right now let me let me grab headphones i forgot them okay hang on take your time take your time um okay hi buddy uh is that a doggy no it's a cat oh i want a dog so bad but i I, I want a uh, cat so bad. Ah, uh, you can come hang out once once this is over. You can come meet mine. They're assholes. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> mine is fame hungry. She always likes to pop up to be seen. She's so cute. Cookie. She's such a no, wait. Is this gonna push my earring off? No, we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, girl. I'm talking about you. Don't catch your attitude with me. <laughs> wait, what's her name? I don't even want to say it. Oh, never mind. She, oh, okay, she, she's so. risen. Her name is Cookie. And Cookie. in five, four, three, two. Come on, mama. Let's go. Come on, say Cookie. hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. hi, girl. Is this better? Do I sound better? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah that's okay. good. That's good. Okay. Hey, Cookie. All right. Hi, behave. Cookie. So you auditioned for Top Model just trying to go support somebody else. Well, so I got there and then like spent hours like not really sure and I like I would even because I think like 10,000 girls tried out uh -huh. and um and every time someone would drive by actually and it's so funny now because I know that a bunch of girls that made it on the show were there that day like Mila was there and Victoria was there um but obviously I didn't like see them or know them right. um but uh and so like yeah, anytime someone would be like, hey, why are there a bunch of tall, skinny girls standing in line outside the Prudential Center? Mm -hmm. I would yell out, mayonnaise commercial. <laughs> or Jeopardy. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. Um, just like <laughs> random, like whatever popped into my head. And, um, uh -huh. and uh, 
So yeah, it was like thousands of girls. And so I would like get, go on coffee runs. I'd be oh. like, can I, does anyone want coffee? Like who wants Duncan? Like I'll go get it. Um, I'm not trying out. I'm not trying out. And then we got to the head of the line and the, the woman was like, okay, are you ready to come in? And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm trying out. And she was like, oh, you should. And I was like, let's go. Give me the application. Okay, let's do like, so it was like, I say that I went there not planning on trying out, but the second she was like, no, do it. I was like, okay, let's go. We're doing this. Wowzer. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure the people behind me were like, this bitch, she left. Like, <laughs> she went and wow. got magazines. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, don't y'all start this stuff in the comments. I will turn y'all off until the very end. They like they like to put things in the comments to distract me and cause me to oh. laugh, I believe. So <laughs> I'm telling y'all right now, don't start this shit today. Okay, so you audition in Boston, cold Boston, and then you, cold get, a phone, Boston. you get a phone call from the producer saying you've made it to the next round and, you, and we want to fly you out. Yeah. One of the fans have a question, and I'll also have a okay. question. On Cycle 9, when it opens up, it shows this montage of like Tyra Banks calling everybody to let them know that they're on the show. Was that real? So I just saw, I just rewatched the first episode a little while ago. Cause I was like, I can't remember anything about that. Like I remember certain things about the audition process, but like a lot of it, I was like, I don't know. Um, so <laughs> I, she never called me, uh -huh. but I think maybe like, so, you know, because at the callbacks, that was the first time, like, you know, the second day, we like did a little video thing and they were like, okay, you know, what do you want to say to Tyra? And I was like, I don't know. And I was sort of shy, which is so funny because now I'm such a, I, I, I like, I am such a ham, but I was so like nervous about this that I, I was like kind of shy. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to say to Tyra. And they were like, looking at my application and they were like, okay. Cause they ask you to write like everything that's interesting about yourself. There's literally a page where they're like, write anything interesting about yourself. And I was like, I don't know what's interesting about, uh, I was in the same town. Like I was like, you know, I worked on a blueberry farm. I worked as a go-go dancer. Like, um, you were a go-go dancer. I was. Yeah. And they made such a big deal about Lisa being a go-go dancer. And I, it's I was like, like, I was like, Oh, is that, are we not, should we not? I'm like, whoop, I'm just, whoop. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> like, we, Lisa and I talked about it, like, uh -huh. at the time. Like, she would be like, don't you hate it when this? I'd be like, yeah, it fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> we, like, compared notes on, like, you know, bar security. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> um, she was much better at it than I was. Cannot stress that enough. Uh, truly. Um, but, so, I think I was, like, very shy and reserved. I think they called the people who they knew would, like, get a you know who would be like oh my god mm -hmm. um which i also was but they didn't know that for sure you know they didn't want to like waste gotcha. tyra's time calling someone who was going to be like cool great thanks <laughs> <I'm right. laughs> um, so yeah i think that's why i, I think maybe because like when you look at like bianca i think and mm -hmm. um i yeah, think people, had one too i think ebony my love we were roommates on the cruise ship the fucking cruise ship. Um, Jenna had the same saying, feelings about the cruise ship. Um, it was awful. It was awful. I forgot. I forgot that everyone on the cruise ship hated us, and they did. They would yell at us, um, and like, like to the point where I think someone threw stuff at us at one point. Like it was oh, all they hated us, and we were like, we're not in charge here. We, we have no power. also like. They showed Victoria getting sick. Everyone got seasick because we were never we were never in rooms that had windows. We spent what, probably a full like ten, almost ten days on a rocking cruise ship with no windows. Like we were always in conference rooms, filling out forms, like um, being yeah, like being told that if we told like uh, you know being told if we told anyone that they would sue us, they would sue our children. Like oh, geez, they would the shoot, sue our parents. Yeah, and so. We got, we never got to like go in the pool. We had to walk by the pool every day. Never got to go in, which was, I love pools. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, it was awful. It was so bad. So, okay. And I, I always ask the girls these questions. So what was it like when you got there and you saw how everything was working? And this one is, is, is particularly interesting. Like you just talked about, it was on a cruise ship. So, like, yeah. you had to take in being on a TV set plus being on a cruise ship. What was that, like, first day of 
seeing the cameras, getting mic'd up, like all that snaz. It actually took a long time before, like when we landed in Puerto Rico, it was days before we saw a camera. But I do remember the first thing that happened is I like, I got off the plane in Puerto Rico and the mm. first person I saw was Janet. Um, okay. And I just remember thinking, that's the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. She yeah. looks like she's stunning in photos. Um, in She's even more attractive in real life. She looks like Audrey Hepburn. Like, I just remember mm-hmm. seeing her and being like, if that's the competition, I'm fucked. Like, I can't. Like, and, and then I saw her and then she walked um, and she was standing near, uh, like, a bunch of other girls. And I, I remember, like, Lisa was one of them. And she's and ebony and they're both like six feet tall i think they're very tall and i just was like oh they're taller and thinner and hotter than i am like this is gonna be insane um and yeah they were just the most beautiful people i'd ever seen and then so yeah it took a long time they like they like did a pee test they did a blood test they did a hair strand test they did like hours of psychological testing like it was days and then we and then they like put us I think the first time we even saw cameras was when they were putting us on a tour bus and we find it was a, it had been like you know three or four days and they were like okay now you get to leave the hotel um, and I was like well that's exciting at least and then yeah there was this whole crew and it was this whole thing so I think they've been like setting up yeah um it was just surreal it was I, I mean yeah I'm from a town of 700 people like right it's insane I mean, I'd been in college in Boston, so, like, you know, I'd seen some stuff, but, like, not really. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Yeah. You know. I bet a lot of Boston tea parties. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of Boston tea. You know, so it's so funny. I thought I loved Boston so much, and I do still have, like, a real soft spot in my heart for it, but it uh-huh. turns out I just like cities. Mm-hmm. Like, when I came to New York, I was like, oh, I like cities. Boston mm-hmm. is racist. I get it. I get it. Is it really? I've never been. A little bit. A little bit. Dang it. My, Dang. Yeah. My friend has a joke about how someone called him the N-word right outside the Cheers bar. And he was like, I thought everyone was supposed to know my name. That's <laughs> not my name. <laughs> right. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. It's not great. Um, so when you say they were giving, they were doing all these like P test hair tests, are you saying they were testing for drugs? Yes. Which we were very confused about because I remember like we were all, so for days, it's just testing. You meet with a, we meet with a psychiatrist for like twice for an hour um, to go over your personality results. We'd like fill in the blank, like Myers-Briggs, I think, personality tests. Oh, I've heard but, of that one. But it was like, I, it felt like the SATs, you know, because there were also like, like I think 75 girls um, and then only you know, based on these tests, only like 40 or however many is in the first episode made it through. Mm -hmm. So like, but we were trying to figure out like what they were weeding out because we were like, what did you answer? Like, did you say you liked wrapping ace bandages around ankles? Like the questions were so weird. Uh We were like, what was, what did you say when the shrink said this? And like, and then we also like, after we had the physical, which by the way, was in a hotel room. If I'm remembering this right, like I got my blood drawn in a Puerto Rican Ramada, which is like, very weird i know very and, weird yeah and and now i'm looking back and i'm like i just took that in stride i was like yes sure here let's do it uh and so um so like we were talking and one girl was like look i'm just gonna say it i did meth like four days ago do you <laughs> think that that's gonna affect it and we were like, I don't know. And, one, and we were like, oh, thank God. And we're still glad that she, like, broke the ice. Because one girl was like, I did coke, like, three days ago. I smoked weed. And, like, it was just, like, all of us being like, what the fuck are they looking for? Um, that so, is like, funny. Yeah. And, like, the girl that did coke made it through. Um, all A bunch of us had smoked weed. Um, but the girl that had done meth did not make it through. So I we were like, clearly, okay. We she did not. Oh, wait, wait, dang it. Okay. See, this is when I fight between being messy and nice. <laughs> so when you say when you say made it through, do you mean like made it through to the house or No, made it through to the first episode. I I don't think she made it to the house. No, no, she didn't. Um Okay. But good. I not I don't think because of the the uh yeah, I don't think because of the cocaine. Um that is funny. I can just imagine being in a room. I did meth. I did coke. I did Molly. I yeah, did we were just like, like, yes, someone had done Molly.
Molly. Um, and I remember because I was like, what is it like? <laughs> What'd you say? I was like, what's it like? And they were like, that's not what this conversation's about. We'll talk about that later. And I was like, wait, okay, 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 okay. Um, but like, what's it like though? <laughs> like, what's math like? Um, mm, I, just I, want, you know, know. Just, I know, I don't want to know, but like, I was, I also was like, so curious. Um, but yeah, and one girl was like, you know, um, was like, yeah, I smoke weed like every day. And like, I'm pretty sure she made it because they did the hair strand test and apparently that can like test back from like three weeks. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we all just were like, I don't know, man, hopefully that doesn't impact it. Uh, they did a pregnancy test. Like it was a whole thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, yeah. A lot of tests. A lot. It was so much for days. And also like they wouldn't even, I talked about this on a TikTok. I think maybe like the first TikTok I made about Top Model was talking about how, so they didn't tell you where you were going. They would okay. just walk you to a room. So like they'd walk you to a room and you'd sit down and they'd be like, you're going to be here for two hours. Start filling in the blank. And you'd be like, fucking, all right. So we would do that. And I remember we would have like groups and we had little handlers um, that w- were like in charge of each group. Um, and so we like, were going somewhere and I was like, I have to pee. And they were like, you can't. And I was like, okay, but like, I have to. And you're they were like, I was like, I, and they were like, no, just wait till we get to where we're going. And I was like, okay, where are we going? And they were like, well, we're not going to tell you that, but like, just wait. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna pee. And it's up to you where, like the when is now out of my, like, I have to pee. So they were like, all right, fine. So we like stopped somewhere and I peed and then we walked and then we went uh, and we were sitting outside this room. They called me in and they were like, can you pee in this cup? And I was like, okay, some communication could have made that answer. Yes. <laughs> but as it is, no, I cannot. And then they were like, okay, well, that sucks, but fine. Um, you know, uh, we're going to draw some blood. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to faint. I faint when I get my blood drawn. It's not a big deal. It just happens. And, uh, and they like freaked out and they were like, oh my God, they made me like lie with my feet above my head and like drink a bunch of water. I was like, guys, it's fine. Like it's, it's not a big deal. They were like, okay, hard parts over. Just put on this hospital gown um, and hop up on the table. And I was like, cool, put on the hospital gown. They came back in, I hopped up on the table and it ripped just down the front <laughs> like it just pulled and just just fell off and I was just sitting on the table tits out like this is going well very well <laughs> <laughs> boo just, just boo it and I was like I was gonna just do it you're like just do the exam I don't give a fuck I'm tired I want to get out of here like it was insane and yeah and so yeah it was like the the testing was was really crazy i still am curious like what the i would love to know like what the cutoffs were like was it meth was it i don't know you know (laughs) also i want to know what did they find like so you mean to tell me that potentially somewhere in a deep freezer could be all of the dna of every girl that was on every single girl yes i never even thought of that yeah you could totally clone all of us start the weirdest army ever oh who would be the sergeant general <laughs> yes who would be the general of, Ooh, of the good army good question i don't know maybe i want to say bianca but she's too nice <laughs> oh yeah bianca's reformed now she's she's she don't got time she don't got time for none of that shit no more she's lisa lisa now could be the general lisa could be the general yeah because she's also yeah she's savvy she's smart she's like business mm-hmm. smart yeah she could do it i love lisa um yeah. Yeah, she could so be the how, general. So how was it seeing Tyra do that little cabaret dance for you guys on the cruise ship? It was good. It was a little awkward I because bet. they made us scream. They were like, okay, when the next thing happens, which they don't tell you what it is, they never, you never know what's happening. Like you spend the whole time you're on the show just being like, okay, I'm going to walk into a room and I know that they'll be like, you know, scream real loud, but you don't know uh-huh. why. You're like, all right, let's go. Um, so they were like just scream real loud like lose your shit and we were like okay we're gonna do it and then tyra pops up so we scream so she's singing this song but we are screaming and the like there's like someone in the back like keep going keep going keep going we're like okay but don't you want to like hear the song they're telling you guys to clap for tyra and clap and scream and make noise and she's singing a song and we're like don't you want to hear the song because we're like what and she's like, we're my top model to be, and I'm a, 
you cannot hear it at all. I watched that episode and I was like, she was singing the whole time. Like, I had no idea because it was you just heard girls screaming like. <laughs> It was so awkward. And like, she just would keep going. Also, I think she had to do it like three times. So by the third time we were like, ah! <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> Got to love Tyra. Got to love Miss Tyra. A truly a commitment to the, the bit. Whatever the bit is, she is committed to it. How was it walking to the panel and you see Tyra? and you see Mr. J, and you see Miss J. It was so terrifying. And also, like, I had never thought about being a model. And so there was this weird moment, because it was like a long walk, you know? Because it was a huge auditorium. It was in the cruise ship, like, stage, uh -huh. where they had the big, you know, productions that they have on cruise ships. I now know. I didn't know that at the time. At the time, I was like, why do they have this? Why do they have an auditorium on a cruise ship? Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a long walk and I, and I, like halfway through, and this has happened on every runway I've ever done. Halfway through, I was like, should I be like doing a thing? Should I like do jazz hands? No, don't do jazz hands. Should I like, like, why pop do I do titties. this? You're like, pop, should I just pop my titties? That did not go well last <laughs> time, but you know, never know. Second time could be the charm. Um, <laughs> and so then you get there and then it's like, it's also like, you know, there's tons of people in the room, but it's silent. And so you're just, it's so tense. Like, it's hard to describe how, like, awkward it is. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a whole crew, right? There's the crew, there's, like, the PAs, sound people. I mean, like, dozens of people. And then the three of them, all of their assistants, like, and, and but silent. Just looking at you. Just looking at me. And I was like, and also, I had just found out that I was supposed to have a thing. That's why I did the nose thing, is they were like, okay, what are you going to do during your interview? And I was like, oh, I'll answer their questions. And they were like, no, no, like, what's your talent? And I was like, um, I thought the point was that I didn't have any. Like, this is, I thought... I thought I did. I, I thought I did not need a talent. Um, that's why I'm here. Uh, like, and they were like, no, no, you have to like, she's singing, she's rapping. Um, she's going to do a dance. Uh, and Ebony, like, you know, Ebony had a whole thing planned out. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I, and Ebony was like, just do that thing you did at dinner last night. <laughs> and I was like, what? Ask who has an eating disorder? Like, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> And she was like, no, I did that. And I was like, oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. But I wanted that to know. So like, <laughs> and oh, she was like, so funny. I know. If I just like went out there and I was like, who do you think has an eating disorder? Tyra, how's your, do you have disordered eating? I bet. <laughs> we all do. It's okay. Um, Jay, how's your, no? Okay. Um, so yeah, so I did the nose thing because I'd done it at dinner the night before uh, and, and it had been a big hit. And also they laughed. They cut it to make it look like they didn't laugh, and they did. They did laugh at you. Not a lot, but like they did. But they chuckled. They chuckled, yeah. And they were like, oh, you know, yeah. Jay was like, oh, what happened? And I was like, oh, you know. Um, and I pulled it out. And then I even, yeah, I was like, that's my trick. And they were like, is that it? And I was like, that's, that's it. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what would have been so gnarly? Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. But since you're a comedian, it would have been so good if you would have came in like with a comedy routine. It would have roasted them. That would have been <gasps> so good. That would have been talk so, so much shit good. about them. And like, I'm a, that's my talent. I'm a comedian. <laughs> See, but I wasn't even a comedian back then. Mm -hmm. So, but I, looking back, I'm like, that's why it makes sense that I did the stupid nose thing and bombed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the, to tell jokes to make people laugh, yeah. that, that, that's naturally in you. And it showed itself present in, in, a, yeah. in a moment of, what is it, fight or flight? You you went for what you knew. Yeah. And well, it, but it would have been so fun to roast them. Because I'm trying to, wait, it was. Yeah, it was Miss J, Mr. J, and uh, yeah, and Tyra. That, yeah. Could have like roasted Mr. J's hair. Um, like, I don't know. It what would you fun. say? I don't know. Just said like, oh, you look like a dollar store Ken doll, you know? <laughs> um like Tyra is messing with our Wi-Fi, Miss Sarah. Ooh, Tyra, get oh, out of no. Tyra. Don't make me go get a, a candle. Leave get me alone. Sage. Yeah. Tyra's definitely in charge of the internet though. That seems right. <laughs> 
So it seems correct. Yeah. So listen, what I want to know, because when Mr. J. Manuel was doing his chats and whatnot, he yeah. was saying that um during this time was when he did not want to come back to Top Model and that they yeah. kind of like forced him back or like he had to come back or what whatever reason he came back. We do know that. Yeah, clearly, like contractually or something. Yes, yeah. but he said that Tyra wasn't talking to him. And like at these panels, I, I remember guys in his chat, he was like, when the camera was rolling, she would talk. But when the cameras weren't rolling, she would physically turn her back to him. Did you see any of this? Could sense any of this? Any talks or chatter about them? I didn't know. It's funny. I actually, I didn't know that at the time, but someone did tell me and I was like, that makes so much sense because... Jay seemed, Mr. Jay seemed so checked out. The second really? the cameras were off, he, like, even if he was, like, mid-conversation with you, the cameras were off and he was done. He wasn't, he was never mean or rude or anything, but he was, like, just not there. It seemed like he did not want to be there. Um, and Miss Jay was, like, so sweet and would talk to you and also was, like, very caring and, like, always wanted to make sure that we were okay and, like, had water and stuff um and so did Tyra like they were very just yeah checked in and like there uh and he was not he was yeah um he was always on his phone and we actually like the girls would speculate we'd be like I wonder if he's like going through a breakup or something like because he was nice he was fine but just not there like and then but also it's gotta suck like you know, you don't want to be there. You're do the job is so intense. And then you're on a cruise ship where everybody's like, I'm sure that they got a lot of hate too, because like nobody knew who the crew was. So the crew could like go to dinner and not, and like blend in and they couldn't, you know? So he probably had to like take all his meals in his room. It probably sucks. Um, yeah. Uh, Sarah, I don't think you know you're doing it, but you're spilling so much tea right now. Oh I'm God. gagging, they're gagging. Ah. Listen, you said Tyra actually guys you guys wanted water. Mm hmm She was yeah, she's um she was very caring and very sweet. Um yeah, she's like she's one of those people who's like always on, you know? Like the cameras would turn off and she'd be like, Okay, now we can be real. And it was like real where? Real to who like for, for whom like who are you so I think she keeps it very close to her chest like I think she has like w like three people in the world that she like kind of lets her guard down around and the rest of the time she's very on but she's very hands-on with the show like she she and the DP would spend like a really long time like working on lighting and stuff and like planning things out oh yeah she was like hands on and she did like a girl fainted every elimination and she would every week she would be like this week we're not gonna do that okay like we're not doing it this week get them juice don't lock your knees like try you know she yeah um I also I ran into her like a couple years ago and she didn't know exactly who I was but she did know she knew me and I was like yeah I also I had like purple hair at the time <laughs> and uh and I was like yeah I was on your show it was at the um Kim Possible premiere and she didn't even walk the red carpet. She was, I think, there for her kid. And she was really sweet. She was like, oh, my God, you were one of my girls. And I was like, yeah, I was on Cycle 9. And she was like, you look great. It's so good to see you. She was really nice. Um, yeah. It's Sarah, you just don't understand how you <laughs> are blowing the minds of the children. Listen, this is why I tell y'all out there, this is why I try to teach the people who watch me, there is a reason why I've never married an idea of Tyra Banks because I've never met the bitch. And yeah. the people who have met her all will have different stories, different experiences under different circumstances. Yeah. And all of this. Let me tell y'all adults out there and the children who are watching the adult mature thing to do in every situation before you give your opinion on anything is to get firsthand experience. Yeah. Don't get secondhand information. Now, as much as the secondhand information may be true, it may have all, it may be reputable, it may be all of that. Yeah, no I've heard she's terrible to work with, but I don't know. Yeah, um, I. It's funny though because I heard, I heard she's terrible to work with for her show, but on Top Model, I didn't hear that. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, yeah, it's, it's a different experience. Now the girls have come on here and slayed her life to smithereens, but this yeah. is she's a multifaceted 
she's a person she's yeah. human yeah and i'm sure she has good you know we all have good years and bad. there are people out there who could have met me at my worst who would think i was a hot mess i was terrible i was a bitch like whatever if you catch me on the wrong day i can be a nightmare i'm sure mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> The, it is funny, though, because, like, the show is exploitative and terrible. You know what I mean? Like, it's like she she was nice and she was great. I'm very lucky because I don't think it was traumatic. I know a lot of girls did. They didn't happen to, like, exploit my worst fears because I'm not afraid of heights and I'm not afraid of, like, there's no animal they could have had on set that would have freaked me out. But, like, you know, they do exploit your fears. Um, and, like, so it's, it's a, she's definitely a very mixed bag. Also, the fainting thing, <laughs> um, people are always like, why? Why did you faint? Like, why did someone faint every week? I always thought it was because they were skinny. Like, the first week, they were like, look, <laughs> a girl faints every week. And I was uh -huh. like, these skinny bitches not, couldn't be me. Could never be me. First week, I fainted. Went down. You like a, fainted? Fainted first week. Yeah. And they were like, it's because you stand with your knees locked. Uh, elimination takes hours. Hours. They give every girl, like, 20 to 30 minutes of feedback you like look at really <laughs> yeah and sometimes we even got to see multiple photos like um wait sarah stop, stop! i know i know it's... i'm surprised no one said that sarah, i was like all too much this is yeah all... okay give me like give me like five seconds okay. five seconds okay, Ten, two. We... okay. <laughs> Celery okay, I'm ready. So you said, okay, you said the girls used to fall every week, and then you said you girls would see multiple photos? Occasionally, not every time, but yeah, sometimes, which is why, like, people are always like, oh, you know, we don't know, like, what did the rest of the photos look like? And to be clear, they absolutely could have just picked a couple, or they could have, like, you know, um, it's on, sometimes we didn't see multiple photos so still absolutely sometimes they could be like all your photos were bad and that wasn't true but um but occasionally yeah they would be like let's just like look at some others in, um, in panel mm -hmm. can, can you name a time this happened i don't think it ever happened to me um no maybe it did maybe it did during the um the week i i it was like the plant week it definitely happened during the plant week and it was either me or ebony because ebony was the i think it was ebony because ebony was the like the the weird flower she was <sighs> um bird of paradise bird of paradise thank you i wanted to say bird and i was like that's not right um anyways uh yeah, she was a bird of paradise, and all of her photos were stunning, I think. It was the point, was they showed a couple others, and they were like, she nailed it. Like, she did amazing. Uh, and they were. They were all beautiful. And then um, they also, I don't, I can't remember if they did the thing where they showed some, uh, if they showed some, like, unretouched ones. But I feel like maybe they did once to prove that someone was, like, really pretty. <laughs> um, oh. I, they didn't do the thing. I know on some cycles they would be like, look at that unretouched photo. You look awful. And it's like, cool. Um, somebody said working in a blueberry farm is hard work. It is hard work. It's really hard work. Also, I was the only one with arms long enough to fit in the blueberry sorting machine. So, um, I am so gagged right now. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to like look no, at no, my no. notes to see where I can get back going. You just gagged me. Okay, no. let me ask you this. Before we, exit out, yeah. before we exit out of this, who else okay. fainted during your time on Top Model? I fainted, uh, Victoria, I didn't faint all the way. I just like, I just got like real woozy and like had to like sit down. Victoria did. Um, let's see. Victoria fell out. Victoria fell out. Yeah. It wasn't like, we didn't, it wasn't like that girl who like, you know, right. like, a, like timber. It was yeah, more look. just like we would get like, they would be like, if you feel lightheaded, tell us. And they had a whole protocol um, where they were like, okay, you know, sit down, put your head between your knees. Um, it was me. It was Victoria. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, Jesus Christ. Not Ambriel. I think Ambriel was okay. Oh, no. You know what? Yeah, Ambriel did, like, 
need a minute at one point um where it would just be like we would just be like we need some juice you know or we need some food or whatever call the bring something over. like call the police we're done <laughs> Call an ambulance, but not for me. But but maybe also for me. Not for me, right. but but for this bitch. Um, yeah. Uh, oh my god! Imagine if it sank. <laughs> the cruise ship sank. Sorry, someone just commented that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and then also like at one point. Yeah. Well, because the panel, the judges, they had like stuff. You know, they had like drinks under the thing, so they were okay. Um, yeah. Oh, they weren't gonna faint. They weren't gonna faint. Um, yeah. Janet never did because she was a champ and a half. I'm like going through all the contestants in my head now. Uh, Bianca which never did. hold up, let me stop yeah. right there. Which brings me to the next segment. And Mila, do, yeah. Sorry. We can do A and TM roll call right now, which is where oh. I name every girl who was casted on your cycle, and you tell mm -hmm. me the first thing that comes to your brain. A okay. couple of words, sentences, whatever you want to give us. Good, okay. bad, ugly, or indifferent. Are you ready? Okay, yes. Sarah, I'm not telling you. You have made my heart go like <gasps> this, like at least three times this whole entire <gasps> time. I'm like, wait, what happened? Wait, okay. Let's keep it going. Mila! Mm -hmm. Oh, such a button. This most just positive, sunny person that has ever, ever existed. Like that I've ever met. Like, to the point where I was, like, wanted to poke her sometimes and be like, okay, but, like, are, what? <laughs> it's not You're real. That's not real. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did very you see fit. her performance on Very What? It. Did you see her performance first week during the smoking photo shoot where she was, like, laughing? Was she really laughing that much? Probably. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know you couldn't fight like she would never get in a fight or anything like anytime you know we'd be like oh like you know whose turn is it to do dishes or whatever and she would just be like <laughs> not mine <laughs> couldn't be me <laughs> just, she just sort of like floated around you know it was uh -huh. it's it was beautiful uh yeah the shrink was on the boat jenna holy shit sorry i forgot that the shrink was on the fucking boat sorry no it's okay um, Wait, Jenna's in the chat? Hey, Jenna! Hi, there. I have a bone to pick with Jenna. Why? Okay, so I, tell, I told the girls, hey, baby, my boyfriend just came home. Hey, honey, how are you? Oh, hi, Mwah. boyfriend. Mwah. But I tell this story, I've told this story before, where me and Jenna, I drunk called Jenna one night. I have done this. This I have done. And we were on the phone. Me and Jenna had to be on the phone for, like, three hours. We were just on the, we were on the phone for a long time. And was this I before or after she did your did this the after this is okay after. and so i had to i think I, I mentioned something about chicken or something she was like wait what is that and i was like jenna you haven't um hi hey. i was like jenna you haven't had this chicken baby please don't because the cookie's gonna go crazy cookie let's stop it and relax i was like jenna you haven't had this chicken before and she was like anyway what i'm trying to say is me and Jenna were supposed to do a live together where she was eating all these these different chicken places I've given her for the first time and she has not done it yet. And she keeps saying that it's my fault that I haven't called in schedule. I'm like, well, girl, I don't know. But I want to see this chicken. Oh, I want some chicken. I can't eat anything right now. I'm on a weird... I, I have like a, a, a fucking infection in my intestines. I can't eat anything. It's all Try tea. celery juice. I should find out if I can have celery juice. I, I can't have any raw vegetables, so I don't know. But maybe if it's juiced, it's okay. I'll find out. Um, it's been, yeah. Oh, I miss chicken. It's good. I love it. It's so chicken. good. Oh, yeah. I would, yeah. I want to do, I also, yeah, I want to try, like, do, like, a chicken sandwich, um, uh, like, like, tasting menu or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, between that and the girl in cycle 16 blurting out getting an abortion, the show is messy. Good, you should blurt out getting an abortion. Getting an abortion is a, a totally okay thing to do. My mom the other day was like, why didn't you tell me when you got an abortion? And I was like, I, I've never had an abortion. And she was like, oh, you just like them? And I was like, yeah, just, I work for a nonprofit that does abortion stuff. God. And she just like thought that she thought that meant that I'd got, I was like, no, I just, I just think they're great. Mm. You don't want to be pregnant anymore, you know, if you want what? one. So, since since you okay. touched on it, can, I'm I'm curious to know, yeah. 
because I'm always curious to know how do people rationalize whether they're um, pro-choice or pro-life? How do you rationalize yeah. your view if you want to? Oh, uh, how do I? Oh, being pro-choice? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, I mean, I, I feel like the thing about the, the pro-choice, pro-life debate that is that there's always going to be a difference. I've talked to, so I work for this nonprofit. We go all around the country. We visit abortion clinics. Um, and they're amazing. We, you know, they're amazing people. Uh, they do all kinds of healthcare at abortion clinics, right? They do trans healthcare. They do, you know, reproductive uh, healthcare of all kinds. Um, you know, you can go get your birth control there. Um, and there's just always like a divide. I don't think that a fetus is more important than the person growing it. And I, I you know, and I never will. Somebody else who is pro-life does. And, and I just always feel like we're, you know, I've talked to a lot of pro-life people. I've talked to a lot of like crazy religious, like women shouldn't wear pants pro-life people, you know? And like, when we talk, I'm like, we're never going to like, I'm never going to change your mind. You're never going to change my mind. You know, I'm Jewish and we believe life starts at first breath. Um, there is abortion in the Bible. Uh, Jesus never said he was, you know, anti-abortion. And the quote that a lot of people use is like, uh, is uh, in your, before you were born, I knew you. And they say that that's the, that's the biblical reason that there shouldn't be abortion. But that's God talking to the disciples. That's not God talking to, it's, it's like Jesus saying like, that he knows everything. Um, so yeah, so that's my thing is like, I believe that we should have autonomy over our bodies and we should be able to decide when we have children. And when we have children, we should be able to raise, like, you know, we should be able to have a living wage. We should be able to have the healthcare we need. We should be able to have an environment that is conducing to raising ch children when we want. Um, so that's my spiel <laughs> no th thank you yeah. for that thank you yeah thank you thank you, thank you. Um, um yeah jumping back in into the top model roll call what about kimberly oh my love they're all my loves i was so excited when you said bianca was your favorite because i was so nervous i was like what if he's mean to be i not that you would ever be mean but i was like what if the people are mean to bianca uh-huh um but she's the best um kimberly is amazing she just had a baby uh, oh congrats yeah she's beautiful she's an amazing actress and uh her husband's real hot oh nice okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good for yeah good for her what about her time on top model which was oh, short i was sad it wasn't longer i feel like um i feel like she yeah she looked like she looks like a victoria's secret model to me always has like the first time i saw her i was like oh my god she should be on victoria's secret um so i was sad it wasn't longer um we did have a funny moment one time where we were, I can't remember, we were on a bus driving somewhere, maybe to the cruise ship or something, or in, we were in Puerto Rico, like driving from one location to another. And, uh, and she was like, you know, sometimes I think I, she, she's like, sometimes I think my dog dying was the, the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I was like, oh yeah, me too. And then she was like, yeah, I just had a really, really good childhood. And I was like, oh no, I had a pretty fucked up childhood. Um, I just really loved my dog. Like, uh -huh. It was one of those things where I was like, I thought like we both, like we both thought we were like bonding. Uh -huh. And then we were like, I was like, oh no, no, it was, uh, my, my childhood was pretty weird. I got left alone with a tiger at one point. Like, you know, it's different. It's For different. Real? Yeah. <laughs> How did you get left uh, alone with a tiger? Um, my friend's dad was like a tiger person. Um, my best my one of my childhood best friends her dad was like a tiger person and he was never around he would like come into town like blow into town for a couple of weeks um you know take her out for ice cream or whatever and then leave but one time he blew into town like with a tiger and he was like hey you want to hang out with a tiger <laughs> and my dad was like yes we <laughs> first there and then and then at one point, like, yeah, they went out to smoke cigarettes. So, like, my friend and I were just, like, alone in this room with a tiger. I remember, like, smushing the tiger's cheeks, and they were huge. Like, I just remember being, like, it's just like a cat, but huge. How big and, was a tiger? I mean, big, a fully grown, not quite fully grown, but, like, a huge-ass tiger. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I'm surprised that's not how my dog died, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. Oh, um, thank you. You're funny. What, what about Victoria? Good old prickly disposition, Victoria. So sweet. Not prickly at all. Just shy and awkward as shit. Victoria is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Jenna, if you're still here and you know where she is, I, from my perspective, Victoria did the most baller move of, uh, that you can do. So she... Yeah. She hung out after Top Model for a while. She didn't model at all, but she was like around. She went to an event or two. Last time I saw her, she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to Oxford. And I was like, amazing. Um, and uh, I was like, that's great. What are you going to study? And she was like, well, I'm going to study Viking burial rituals for horses. And I was like, sure, that's a lot, but okay. Let's just, let's, I'm just going to roll with that. Okay. Then she just disappeared. Got rid of all of her social media. I have no idea. I assume that she is now the preeminent authority on Viking burial rituals for horses. It just that sentence just keeps coming, um, and just disappeared. What, Victor, if anybody knows if who Victoria tell. is, please help us because we would love to talk to Victoria. Yeah, she probably I, was like, "This bitch is too dumb. I can't. I gotta go. I gotta go hang out with smart people." And I was like, "No, I want to hear about the. Tell me about the horses. Come on, the horses." I was like, no, I gotta, I gotta go hang out with smart people at Oxford. Yeah, she's a badass bitch. Do you remember that moment in panel when she turned around and asked all of you guys, did she have a prickly disposition in front of? Um... <laughs> because we all loved her and she was the sweetest button. Like that made so much sense at the time because like we had literally all just been like giggling and laughing and then we come out there and they're like, you're prickly. And I could just see her being like, She's not prickly. She's just very smart and stubborn, you know? Um, it was very weird to see. Like, it was very weird. A lot of times, you know, we would go to panel and we'd be like, okay, that's the personality trait that they want to, you know. And I think they kind of wanted me to be wholesome because they were like, um, you know, blueberry farm, like plus size, like body right. image. And I was like, I don't know what any of that means. Um, but... So we could see like what aspect of their personality they wanted to like bring out. And with her, it did feel very weird. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it was like, that's not who she's not. Yeah. She never seemed, pr I don't know. She never seemed prickly to me, um, but maybe I'm just, I don't know, too nice. <laughs> or like she was nice to me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Like I remember I, it's so funny. I'm, I was so not a crier at the time, but I cried like when I got eliminated, I cried when I found out I made it into the house. It was very weird. Like, my best friend of 10 years watched the show. We'd been friends since I was 11. She watched the show, and she was like, I've never seen you cry, you bitch. Like, what the <laughs> shit? <laughs> like, yeah, my What dad are they doing to like, you over there? Yeah, my dad was like, I haven't seen you cry in 10 years. Like, you've never cried. You haven't cried in public. You didn't cry in public when you were a baby. Like, what happened? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, which is apparently true. When I was a baby, I, like, didn't like to cry in public. I would, like, wait till we got home. Um, and, uh so I don't but so I cried when I found out I made it into the house and she like hugged me and she was like no more tears like we got this like you got this like you're she was so sweet she was like you are so strong you don't need like this is just normal this is just a normal day and it was very like helpful and grounding because I was that I think that is why I was crying as I was like this is just so surreal like I couldn't believe that it was happening and she was like you got this she was yeah so um I don't know I never thought she was prickly mm -hmm. yeah. what about Janet Oh, pretty face Janet. Pretty face Janet's still so pretty. Also just had a baby or is pregnant. I'm not sure. Um, we, I, I really only see her on social media. But either way, um, yeah, the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in real life. I just, yeah, uh, should have been like, yeah, I feel like she should have moved to LA. I don't know. She could be on TV. She's just mm -hmm. stunning. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, funny, a ham. Also, I think she smoked. I'm not sure. Not really? a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think she like, liked to have, I remember, yeah. I think not enough that quitting really sucked, but I think she, she like, yeah. But great. The sweetest, funniest, um, girl. Yeah. She did struggle a little with Heather. That was the only thing. She had some, she had some hard times with Heather. And she would always be like, okay, Sarah, walk me through it again. 
Heather is different because I'd be like, because uh-huh. she is on the autism spectrum. Uh-huh. And, uh, she has Asperger's. And so, and she'd be like, okay. And that means what? And I'd be like, okay, that's what this means. <laughs> and that's what we, and we, I, and she'd right. be like, okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I got, I'm going to go back out there. And she'd like, go, um, yeah. What about Ebony Morgan? My roommate on the cruise ship in the tiniest room. Friggin', we looked like praying mantises in a jar that was too small. Like, we not could fair. not. It was so, it, the, the room, we could touch it if we put our arms out. Like, you know, it was like less, and, and with these two tiny twin beds, both of our legs were just hanging over the, the tiny twin beds with no Robin. window. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. And the shower was like not a real shower and it was too like too short for us the shower came up to here um yeah the sweetest uh i was so surprised when she went home really i couldn't believe it i i because she just looked like when you look at her she's a model to me she was beautiful just beautiful oh god so beautiful um and so like like there's beautiful and there's stunning and she was stunning you know like (laughs) When she walked down the street, you just, you looked immediately. Um, mm. Yeah. And the, and just, yeah, she's a sweetheart. Um, she tried to be the bitch and it like didn't work. You know, like that first episode, she's like trying so hard and it legit didn't work. She, um, she was trying. She was. And like, we even talked Why? about it in the room. She was like, I don't know. I thought it would get me some more screen time. And it did. It worked. Mm. So but it didn't fit. It wasn't like who she was, you know? Gotcha. And so then once we got into the house, she, we were like, fr- everyone was pretty friendly with her. Nice. Um, yeah. And she even apologized. She's like, I'm sorry. I asked if you had an eating disorder, um, you know? Mm. Yeah. What about Ariel? <laughs> the nicest person. Also the most beautiful voice. Also, she used to just make up songs for us. Mm-hmm. Like we would all be sitting out on the, I don't know, was this porch and we would just all sit there like with, it was so fucking wholesome. I can't, um, we would like <laughs> sit there with tea cause we, none of us could drink, you know? And so sometimes like Janet and Celicia would have a bottle of wine every, like, I think they did it like twice. Um, and we would just all sit there and she would like improvise these beautiful songs. I'm so surprised I never made it on. Like she sang them. Yeah. Like about us, about top model. It was amazing. I love her. Did you get a chance to watch the live I deal with her? No, I want to. I feel awful. Last time I was in LA, I was supposed to see her and I went, we were going to meet at this restaurant, but there were two and I went to the wrong one. And it was like, so I showed up at the wrong one, like 45 minutes late and it was an hour away. And I was like, I'm so, it was like an hour away from the other one. I was like, I'm so sorry. I can't figure out LA. I'm, I felt so bad. Oh, I felt no. awful. And so we couldn't see each other. And I'm so sad because I think she moved to Texas or something. And oh, mm-hmm. I, want, I hope she's okay. I just realized she's in Texas, I think. Oh. I'm going to check on her. Yeah, we should check on her. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, after this, I'm going to make sure she's okay. Because also I miss her. She's just great. Um, yeah. I, for, I don't think I told her that I, I felt so bad. She was like, no, no, no. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't. I can't drive another hour. LA is terrifying. I got to, yeah. Oh. Well, hopefully you guys get to like reunite and have cookies. Stop it! Stop. Yeah, you guys get to reunite and have that dinner meeting. Yeah, we're gonna. No, we will. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that's gonna happen because she's the best. What about Lisa? Long oh my legs god, Lisa! Long legs, Lisa, killing it as a model. Still, mm-hmm. I think she's the only one who like really had like commercial long term success as a model. Mm-hmm. Lisa and I ran into each other on the, in the weirdest places after the show. We've, run in, we've just run into each other three times. Once on a train to New Haven? Mm-hmm. No idea why. Uh, and then once, like, in a, a, like the, a club or something in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once uh, she was going to see her agent and I was going to a casting and they were in the same building. But it was just, like, like in an elevator where we were like, what the fuck? Um, wow yeah shout out yeah. to lisa yeah lisa's um, great what about heather oh heather my favorite i think we were the closest in the house i haven't okay. talked but i haven't talked to her since i hope she's i think she's doing great she's yeah she's great um and amazing uh and just yeah like a good person on the inside i love not that the others aren't but just like 
you know when you meet someone and you're like oh like mm -hmm. you're just like a little hug mm -hmm. yeah bianca oh the nicest i love her Bian no filter that was always the yeah. thing about bianca is that she wasn't a bitch she just had no filter so like you could it was very easy to edit her any way you wanted because mm -hmm. she, she was gonna say like, it she was gonna say whatever she'd be like i don't like bananas but i do like fish sticks what's that <laughs> on your head you know are you breaking out i see a pimple anyways <laughs> <laughs> my favorite quote from that um cycle has to be when she was when her and Celicia were going back and forth in that room and she was like check your thighs at the door and i'm done i was like what she was like your borderline plus size i was like what are you talking about but it was so funny i know oh man and it was funny because like people always ask like is that real and like yes that is real that that happened that was a fight but like, have you never fought with your roommate? Like we were together all the damn time, oh, you know? And then you're fi like, they were like fine afterwards, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, it's not, nobody has the energy to like be mad. Well, lots of people have the energy to be mad all the time, but you know, we had to, we had to like get in the van to get like, it, we, we were t literally together 24 seven. So like, right. yeah, you're going to fight. Um, and then the next day, yeah, they would like be okay. Uh, but also Bianca is like, Bianca looks like she's wearing makeup when she's not, and it's not fair. Like, her mm -hmm. eyes look like she has eyeliner on all the time. Uh -huh. It's rude. She's so beautiful. Jenna. Ah, oh, Jenna. She and I just talked on the phone the other day, and I was like, why don't we do this more? Like, we talk so much on social media. Why don't we? Why am I not drunk calling you about chicken more often? Um, yeah. We had the uh -huh. best conversation, like, I had ever had with anyone in the long. I love me um jenna like jenna, i yeah. love her yeah jenna is great um and killing it uh I, we were like talking on the phone and she was like yeah you know i'm like not doing anything lately like i'm just like not even up to anything and then she's like i mean you know like yes i am like going to school to become a therapist and like uh -huh. yes you know i do like post amazing art on my instagram but like i'm not really doing anything and i was like you're not doing anything looks like a real full fucking day for me like right. <laughs> like i'm tired just looking at you she's like no i'm so i'm just like i'm so lazy and i was like okay bitch <laughs> did you watch our chat I watched some of it. I actually watched some of it right before this, but not the whole thing. I should. What what um, what 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 part did you see? I saw I saw the first like forty five minutes. I think. Okay, yeah. so I think within that forty five, she may have touched on like the emotional, psychological effects, ramifications top model had on her. What is your reaction having filmed her, filmed with her, excuse me, and now? Yeah. Seeing, you know, seeing her talk about that experience in 20, I think we did it in 2020, 2020, 2021, whatever. Like, how, what's yeah. your reaction to that? You know, it's interesting. I, because I I also have not thought about Top Model for a long time. And mm -hmm. in the past couple of years have been reflecting on it as well. Um, so she and I have that in common. I think I didn't get as far as her. And also the angle that they had for me was so different that we had very different experiences. And like, it sounds like it really was shitty and traumatic for her. And it, it was not as bad for me, not because, um, not because like of any strength or weakness that I or she has, but just mm -hmm. because of how it worked. Like I, di I, I didn't make it as far. They weren't exploiting my trauma, right? They weren't like, I didn't, um, you know uh have to go through that the thing that had the biggest impact for me and the thing that's weird when i look back like i just watched the first episode and i'm so thin and i felt so fat like when i watch it it's so jarring to see what i really look like because they really were trying to hammer home the difference between me and the other girls so much that the producers really would say things like is it hard being the fattest one in the house and i would be like Yikes. yes that is hard and they would be like is it do you think that they all are thinking about it and i was like well you're the only ones talking about it you know like they'd be like do you think that all the girls think you're fat and i would be like do all the girls think i'm fat like mm -hmm. <laughs> um and and it's like i think that you know i think that a lot of um people can relate to this sort of weird dichotomy that that c can happen um where fully like 75% of your brain 
thinks that you are ugly. And then there's this 25%. It's like the attic of the house where you're like, maybe I'm stunning. You know, maybe I'm like really beautiful, but it's like, it's this weird, you, you, it's like you're hopping between these two like places in your brain where you're like, nope, I'm disgusting. I'm fully disgusting. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely the grossest thing in the world. And then you're like, but maybe I'm gorgeous. Right. Uh, you sort of like flip flop between these two things. And so then I had this show, I was on America's Next Top Model. So I was like, oh, I, I think I'm pretty. I think I might be pretty. Mm-hmm. But then I have these people who are in this, these positions of power, right? I have these producers who have spent weeks terrifying me and being like, we will sue you if you fuck up. If you step out of line, we will send you home. This has the potential to change your life. But if you fuck it up, we will wreck your life um, forever. Like they, you know, the lawyers literally said that. They would be like, if you step out of line legally, we will take every cent that you have, that your family has. Like we will, like you signed a contract that says that we can sue your children. And so, you know, the power dynamic is so strong. You feel so much like you do not have power and you have to do what these people say. And then they said, you are fat. And so it was like, I just, it was like, I had to believe them. It was like all of the, that, those, that part of my brain that was like, you're on top model. You might be pretty. It was like, I, I, it felt like I, I couldn't listen to it. And so I just, I, I, at the time I like knew in my heart of hearts that I was fat. And so that's why it's so jarring for me now to look at it and be like, well, I was like very thin. Like <laughs> I was very thin. Um, and so, yeah. And I think it was just a weird thing of like, I, I was on the show, but they, you know, they wanted to sort of set me apart. That was the angle they were going for is they wanted me to be like, yes, plus size, hooray. But instead I just was like, I never, you know, I didn't know anything about body positivity. I didn't know anything about, um, the, I didn't know anything about plus size fashion. The only thing I knew about plus size fashion was that my mom used to get Newport news catalogs. And I was like, that's it. That's all I got. And also right. I was like, it's a section in JC Penney. Um, and, and a lot of that is just, yeah, I grew up in a very remote part of the country. You know, it's like, we had Vogue, but you had to drive a real long way to get it or, you know, have it delivered or whatever. Like it wasn't, yeah. So, um, so like I, for me, it was not traumatic, but it was very impactful. Um, and, and so when I hear people talking about their experiences, like I can't imagine what it would be like to ha- also have my trauma, like my childhood trauma capitalized on, or, now, like, manip- you know, exploited. Yeah. I want to know, just, just hearing you talk now, um, that, that was, you, you so perfectly said everything that you just said um, and just going through the different stages and the different aspects. I loved it. That was amazing. Mm. I want to know with you feeling like that, because it's almost like this, like this parent complex, like, you know, if mommy and daddy tells me this, it, it must be true. It must be true. They're, they're, you know, they're the authority of my life. They care the most about me They're you know, so it, it must yeah. be true. So I totally, totally. And they were, they were that. literally right there providing the roof. It was their house, you know, yes. like, as long as you live under my roof. And it's like, well, I do have to admit this is your roof. Yes. Yeah. I want to know, like, how did you, looking back on that now with you being who you are, which I view you to be like a very confident, well-aware oh, person. Thank you. How do you view that experience of you having those thoughts while in top model? Like, am I pretty? They're telling me this. They're, they're asking me these types of questions. How yeah. would you, let me take a step. How would you now respond to that? Oh, you mean like if I was on the show now? Oh, I mean, hard to say. Because part of the reason that the show is so weird is that it is so surreal. And they do remove you so much. Like, you know, they took our, we didn't have our phones. They took our phones. Um, we, so we had no internet. Um, like we had no idea what day it was ever. Um, you know, it was just like, it was photo shoot day. It was what, you know, it was whatever, it was whatever Tyra Mail said it was going to be, you know? Um, and so, uh, I didn't say Jesus Christ was silly. My husband looks just like Jesus. Okay. I, anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. Got distracted by a comment. Which no, you're might okay. actually be you're old. Um, oh no, it is. I haven't even seen all the new. Co- well, that's good. It wasn't scrolling and updating. Okay. What was I saying? Um, oh so yeah. So we had no phone. Um, the only thing we could read was if we asked for fashion magazines, they would bring us fashion magazines, but they would tape over the cover. 
So like, like I remember there was one day where we were convinced we were going to die. We were like, oh my God, LA is exploding. Like what is happening? We were freaking out because there were all these bangs. And we were like, what is that? Like, oh my God, we're going to die. And then we went outside and it was fireworks because it was the 4th of July. And we didn't know it was the 4th of July. And you know, I'm listening to everything you're saying about like, of course we know they take away the phones, but you guys are secluded. They're taping over magazines. They're basically taking you out of the real world and injecting, injecting you into this this yeah. reality and so like everything you're saying it's just it, it, it makes more and more sense why certain things happen why certain girls like are okay with certain things or go like because it's you're you're not in the real world yeah. anymore and so they really control the reality and so like it's hard to know it's, it's hard to know how i would react because i was so surprised at the time by how i reacted mm -hmm. because i am i like even then i kind of was a ham you know i was like a dramatic person you know like i i was i wasn't a i didn't know that i wanted to be a comedian yet but i did know that you know i loved being funny and then i just clammed up and i acted like like i acted like i did when i was five and just painfully shy mm -hmm. and it was like like, you know, when I, when I would be interviewed and I didn't understand a question or I felt like they were manipulating me, I would, I would say shark facts, which is what I used to do like in elementary school, you know, it was like, I just reverted to the very weird, quiet kid. Um, and I think a lot of people did like revert to how they were when they were kids. I think a lot of us like really, because yeah, it is. It's, it's so funny you say the parent thing. Cause that's so true. Like that's absolutely it. And I don't know if I've like if I'd ever like clocked that like mm -hmm. they do feel like your parents because they're mm -hmm. in charge of everything they're in charge of when you get fed they're in charge of when you can go to sleep um you know and so I when don't you know can do I, everything basically yeah, yeah I want to say if I could be if I could like wave a magic wand I would be like um you know I would be like I don't care if they think I'm the fattest girl in the house but I don't think they do I think you are trying to get that reaction out of me and I think all bodies are beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Like mm -hmm. I would, you know, um, I would hopefully be, yeah, more, more body positive, more mm -hmm. accepting. And um, yeah, okay. but I don't know, you know, I want to mm -hmm. say that I would do that and I would be really confident and right. like cool and calm and collected, but I might still be like, did you know that the nurse shark has, you know, uh -huh. um, like lives in, in shallow waters and, is responsible for most uh -huh, of the shark uh -huh. attacks and they would be like well, who is this bitch um what's going on it's true wait i'm sorry i think these are still old comments don't find victoria <laughs> girl <laughs> leave her ignore alone those comments. i know sorry 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 you're right um what yeah. about chantal i had a chance to talk to chantal chantal is the reason i am wearing makeup is because i looked at her and i was like oh my god she looks exactly the same <laughs> No, she looked good. She looks as for especially like she just had a baby like two she seconds ago. Rude. Um, her postpartum body is uh thinner than my prepartum. Um, no, she's uh Chantal is the sweetest person, and I, I remember I will always remember she said I was put on this earth for two things to model and make babies, and she has done both, and I love she's it. Doing both. Doing both. Sarah, you um, have children? No. Oh, no kids. Okay. no, not yet. Um, got you, got you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and um, yeah, just yeah, just very sweet. Um, and I remember, yeah, we used to do this thing where we would like all sit in a cor in a circle sometimes um, mm -hmm. in the uh, in the walk-in closet, and we would like all tell secrets. Um, and yeah, she just was always like so sweet, okay. and just like yeah, very, very, very kind. Um, and it's funny because she had that one fight and she was so embarrassed about it. She um, talked about it in our chat. She was like, she I was know. so embarrassed. I was like, girl. Whatever. Stop. And it happens. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, that, and that is the other thing is like, there's no way that someone could act on a reality show where I wouldn't be like, that could be me. You know, mm -hmm. like that could, you never, you just, it's just such a weird experience. That you just can't, it's very hard to predict how you will act, I think. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah beautiful and and kind and sweet um and i just i feel like she's probably a really good freaking mom 
No, she during our chat she kept going to um tend to her kids. So I probably Aww. think yes, yeah, she's probably an amazing probably. mother. Yeah. She was like, I step away for two seconds. I'm like, yeah, go, go ahead, girl, go see Get your kids. Ears. No. Mm -hmm. And so then last cute. but not least, Miss okay. Alicia. Oh, so man, um, Salisha is a hard ass worker. She works so hard. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, are you, were you upset that she won? Like, did you, do you think she only won because of the controversy? And I was like, no, I mean, I don't, I, I know she was like on a commercial or in the camp or something, but she worked so hard. She got magazines every week. She studied them. Like, and I remember after she got the haircut, which she hated, which, cause it was bad. Um, or not the haircut, the, the wig, you know, that they, they sewed onto her head. Um, badly by the way they had to fix it a couple weeks later <laughs> um because it started growing out into a cone head um wait y'all do we know that that was a wig sewn on her head i don't know if i knew that was a wig sewn on her head i think so they braided her hair and, and sewed the wig sewed, on so the wig on but they didn't do it right so it grew out weird she had to get it fixed oh um and she hated it but she w didn't you know she didn't let that affect her she just mm -hmm. like she would get magazines and anytime she saw someone with that haircut she would see what worked and what didn't she practiced like i think she wanted it she really wanted it more mm -hmm. than me um so okay uh, did y'all know that twiggy quit after cycle nine because victoria is holding her captive did twiggy <laughs> quit after cycle nine um she yeah, she wasn't there for cycle 10 she was done yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. she was not super nice was she what what was twiggy like or she didn't like me she might have been i guess i can't remember what she was like with other girls but she didn't like me um and she yeah she was very much one of the ones like i can't remember how it look i don't know how it looks in episodes because i haven't i barely watched it at the time i watched it like this like i bet yeah. um but yeah she was very much the one that was like are you losing weight because you could lose a bit more twiglet <laughs> Twiglet. Twiglet um, I think she has a lot of internalized fat phobia and ageism. You know, I think it's, it, it felt very much like someone who was dealing with a lot of that herself. Um, I mean, yeah. when you are technically pop culture's icon for the for, skinny girl model look, I mean, I can only yeah. imagine the slightest form of jiggle makes yeah. her uncomfortable. And then, yeah, and, and as you, especially, yeah, she was what young and thin was supposed to be. So when you deviate from that at all, it's got to be very, it's got to be a mind fuck. I can't imagine, especially because, like, even looking back now, I'm like, oh, that was a different time when I did top model, let alone when she modeled. Like, whoo, must have been oh, brutal. I bet. Mm. Well, you just finished a and Roll Call, girl. Ah! We still have a lot of more questions to go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So Allie Philly 92 wants to know, how did you really feel about that soccer mom makeover? Somebody in the comments also called it Karen. I said, oh, it's a Karen haircut. The, like if you Google Karen and look at the image results, it's pretty, pretty damning evidence. Um, Can I tell you this? Yeah. Yeah. I hope this doesn't come out bad. Oh, I hope this nope. doesn't come out bad. I'm, I'm just going to be very honest. Before the whole Karen haircut thing came out, yeah, that used to be my favorite haircut to see on Caucasian women. Like, when when I would see, like, when yeah. I, just, I just would just have this natural affinity, like, I love this haircut on you. And they usually have knit, like, they're, they're that yeah. girl who's just like, you know, and I'm just like, yes! And so when the Karen thing yeah. happened, I was like, "Damn, I can't go for this haircut." I was like, oh, we don't, we don't like that. At, yeah. yeah, we don't at like the time. Karen. It was very cool. It was the Rihanna haircut at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's edgy. It's fun. It's hip. It's professional. It's like everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I loved it at the time. I was so excited. Mm -hmm. um, I was super. Yeah, uh, I was really excited, and I was like, I think they thought I was gonna cry because um, I had really long hair. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, we're going to cut it all off. And I was like, free haircut. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> it grew. I will say, I think part of the reason that um, it became a Karen haircut is that it grows out and is very bad. It grows out into a flock of seagull bang in the front and a mullet in the back. Mm. So it's like party in the front, party in the back. Neither is a good party. Uh -uh, no. <laughs> you don't want to go to either. Neither. <laughs> a lot of Miller High Life at both parties. Um, 
And so it grew out and was like awful growing out. Also, when I w went to agencies after the show, they were all like, there can't be a short haired plus size model. Come back when your hair is long. They literally all told me to come back in a year. Um, so that was very frustrating. Uh, because? Because at the time, really plus size models could only do catalog and you were supposed to have long hair. You're supposed to have long hair and be very like approachable girl next door. There weren't edgy plus size models at the time. I think now um, it, it would be different. Like I think, you know, like Barbie Ferreira, she's pretty edgy. She has, I think so, had long hair when she started, but it's short uh -huh. now. But like the industry has changed a lot. But at the time, yeah, every agency was like, we can't work with this. And I was like, wigs, baby. And then finally there was one agency that was like, all right, let's get extensions and see how you test. So we, I got some extensions and, uh, and they still were like, nah. <laughs> Yo, y'all. So that, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me fix this once and for all. I'm gonna set my charger right here in my lap so it doesn't fall and disconnect. Cause I'm like, why is my phone keep saying going dead? I'm like, I keep charging it. Like I keep leaning over the charger. Oh, but it's I see, I see, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like dangling. So let me just put it all right here. Okay. okay. So of course we can't talk about makeovers without asking every Cycle Nine girl we talk to. Do you remember the production notes found in the packet at the hair salon? Yes, by Victoria. That's so Tell funny. us more, I, tell us more. I missed, I, I missed the beginning of the drama. I don't know where I was. I can't really remember the timeline. I just remember that it was a thing. Um, and uh, it was like, she, yeah, Victoria was like, oh, I found this piece of paper and it had notes on like all of our personalities. Um, and and that was really all I heard. And there was like sort of some commotion. Um, and I wonder if that's why they called her prickly because she was like, do you want me to be prickly? Like, I don't know, or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I wish I could remember more, but I missed most of it. Like I that's came okay. back and everyone was like all in a, in a tizzy. And I was like, what are we, what are we tizzying about? What's happening? <laughs> uh -huh. um, and uh it's funny, I, I should have, yeah. Because they, they, like, took it away from no her at some point. Fine. They, like, she, like, had it, and then they took it away. Um, yeah, I do know she, like, didn't have it by the time I got there. Uh, so I think they must have, I don't think she would have, like, thrown it away or anything. Um, or maybe she didn't pick it up. Maybe she just saw it and... Um, but yeah, it apparently had like like personality. It had like what they wanted to emphasize for everybody. And it was like, you know, Bianca, bitchy, um, Lisa, like I think they wanted to like go for the um they wanted to talk about how she was in foster care a lot and like um yeah and uh I forget what Jenna's thing was, but there was a thing for Jenna. Um and I remember being like, Did you see mine? And she was like, No, I can't remember. And I was like, <laughs> I wanna know. <laughs> I feel like but it would have been too stupid to insult. <laughs> but I'm I'm pretty sure it probably had to do something with you being plus size. For sure. With that, probably. Yeah. Um, and I think they definitely wanted to make me cry, which didn't happen until I got eliminated. They must have been so relieved. They were like, finally. We dressed Fine. her up as trash. We called her fat. Like <laughs> we cut all her hair off. She wouldn't cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to talk about some of this now. Now, because it's interesting to hear how, how you view this. Yeah. And Okay, I don't want to touch on it just yet. I'm, I'm going okay, to okay, put okay. a pin in it. Yeah. So Vanda Cosmetic wants to know, hi, Sarah, how did you feel about Heather and Jenna and Ambrielle winning the PSA challenge? I thought your group did the best. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was scary. I think I, I thought I was going to go home after that, actually, because I had sort of taken the lead on, like, writing the script. Um, and... Yeah, I thought our group did well, too. I thought they were all good. Um, I kind of had forgotten about that challenge. Wow, right. Yeah, we did a PSA. Mm -hmm. It was like, I had a thing. I can't remember. Man, I had totally forgot. Honestly, I had totally forgotten about that okay. challenge until right now. Wow. I, I At the time, I was very nervous because I had kind of written the script and I was afraid they were going to send me home. Mm -hmm. um, but I do remember, like, either right before or right after that, I won a challenge. I won the makeup challenge. And I was so surprised because I was awful. At, I'm pretty good at makeup now, but at the time I was awful at it. And I was like, oh, cool, I won. And um, 
when I did, uh, when I filmed the CoverGirl commercial, the thing I won was I got to film a CoverGirl commercial. And when I mm-hmm. filmed it afterwards, they were like, it was, um, Raja was there. And, I'm sorry, Sutan was there. Uh, and the hair guy, there were a couple people there. They just came to the house and we were filming this like CoverGirl commercial that went on the internet or something. I wonder, that probably still exists. I have no idea. Probably. Um, probably. And uh, they were like, you should have won that challenge. You are really good at memorizing lines. Like, mm-hmm. you should do commercials after this. And I was like, okay. <laughs> sure. So, cool. Um, they were like, yeah, you're really good. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Uh, but that's really all I remember. Okay. So Miguel underscore Delion wants to know, what was the true tea on the gargoyle photo shoot? Did you think you were doing a good job and then they chose a bad photo for you? No, I did not think I was doing a bad job. The photographer did not like me. I almost cried that day. That day, they almost got me to cry. I was convinced. I I knew it was not good. Um, it's like that, he, my poses weren't good. I, mm-hmm. I was so upset that day um, because, yeah, I, I felt like I was doing anything wrong. I do think it's bullshit that, like, I did a bunch of crouchy gargoyle poses, and he was like, you look awful. <laughs> like, stop doing that. Um, and had me do more, like, standing up because he was like, it's just not translating. Like, And I'm, I honestly believe that they looked really bad because I didn't know. I was, like, trying and failing to, like, do high fashion gargoyle. I didn't know how to do it. Um, so then they were like, yeah, none of your photos look like a gargoyle. And I was like, okay, the photographer did tell, like, make me stop. Like, he made me stand up. Um, so. I don't think I they also, styled yeah. you right, though. I remember what you had on. I, you could have been styled a whole lot better. Yeah. Well, also, they had such a hard time because I had no hair getting it up and into a ponytail. Mm-hmm. They ended up having to, like, shellac it to my head. Um yeah and yeah the photographer was like i have not read mr j's book but i want to now um it's good yeah uh i should read it because i have not i've I've been writing more about my experience with top model and like thinking about that so i would love to read what's already out there Mm -hmm. um yeah but i knew that i I knew that that the photos weren't good Mm -hmm. um yeah okay and uh yeah so no I, i don't think I have no idea what the photos were like, but I, I, I say, I can't, I guess I didn't go home after that, but I thought it was going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Miguel also wants to know, Jenna says you also smoked. How was it for you to quit smoking cold turkey? It was okay. It was not that bad. It was hard because they told us beforehand, they were like, you will not, like, we couldn't, it's not like, you know, when we ran out of cigarettes, we could leave and go get them. We were never Mm -hmm. allowed to just like go to a store, you know, Mm -hmm. like we're never allowed to leave the house by ourselves at all. Um, And uh, like, you know, it was like all alarmed and camera security and stuff. Um, So they told us like, bring as many cigarettes as you need for, you know, bring two months worth because you might, if you win, you'll be there for two months. Yeah. So I, I also had a carton. So we just like had, it wasn't even, so you got like a drawer in the walk-in closet and you would just see the cigarettes every day. So that was the hardest part is like, you would like open your drawer and there they are. Um, and you were like, well, I touched yeah. one. Yeah. I did sneak one though in the house. Um, I like hung out the bathroom window and smoked one. Um, mm. And Heather caught me and she was like, were you smoking? And I was like, no, I just, <laughs> I just pooped and lit a match. I can, oh, of course, of course, getting, of course, you get caught doing dirty work by Heather. I know. Yeah, and I was like, no, it is, it's a match. Go to sleep, Heather. Go back. To Go to sleep. bed. Go to bed. <laughs> and then after the show, they put you in a hotel where you also can't leave. But there was a little patio in my room, so I could smoke. And I just, yeah, Jenna was talking about how she was like, I chain smoked. Like, who? The second I was out, I was just on that patio, like. Um, I don't smoke anymore. I quit actually not even that long. I quit for good. Not even that long after the show. But thank you. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Oh man. It was, it was all right. You know, it's like mm-hmm. Jenna said, you kind of just had to deal with it. Um, so drank Ma- a lot of coffee. So Miguel also wants to know, 
were all the girls that smitten over Tyson Beckford. Beckford, excuse me. You had the iconic line. I just had sex with him in my mind, and now I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot that. Um, you, okay. Here, it was a lot. Like, we were around a lot of girls. Vagina. Men, a lot of vagina. Incidentally, the house is when I found out that I was bisexual. Um, not because I was attracted to them, but because I kept, that's a, sort of a whole separate story. But anyways, um, actually, it was Jenna who helped me uh, realize um, that I was bi. Not because I was, again, not because anything happened between us, but just because of a conversation we had. But anyways, um, yeah, it was a lot of vagina. Um, wow. And the only men we were around were on the crew and we weren't really allowed to talk to them too much. And so there was just like a lot of pent up energy, you know? So anytime there was a man, we were like, what's up, Nigel? What's up? What's up, Tyson? The uh -huh. hottest male model in the world. But he is shorter than I thought. He's about my height, maybe even a little bit shorter. Really? Enrique Iglesias, 6'4". Really? So tall. We were all, it was really Enrique Iglesias that we were like, Oh, Jenna said, don't lie. We hooked up. Ah! <laughs> Obviously. Look, we're, Jenna, just accept it. We're going to get married and move to Vermont and start a, uh, and, ha and keep bees. All right. Just, just <laughs> get ready. All right. Um, yes. Yeah. I actually, it's funny, Jenna. I don't even know if I ever told you this, that this is when at the time I think I was like, yes, I am also bisexual, but that really was me being like, holy fuck, I'm bisexual. Anyways, it's a separate story, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried to be so casual about it. I was like, wait. What's bisexual? Can you just real quick, just real casual, no big deal, no reason, just tell me every single thing about that? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's me. Anyway, because <laughs> um, I kept, like, thinking I was gay. Uh, ignore the troll Sarah. Oh, I haven't even seen the troll Sarah, so I don't even like. Um, and, they said keep bees and grow blueberries. Uh, yes, keep bees and grow blueberries. That I don't have to pick. It'll be great. Um, yeah uh no but it, yeah we lost our mind over Enrique Iglesias he's so tall when I watched one of your TikToks it was one of like the first TikToks that people sent to me and you were talking about um I can't remember all of everything you said but the thing that stuck out to me the most and I think it was like the punchline was like you, like, you couldn't even masturbate while, while you were at the house and I'm just like I'm thinking that's a whole nother layer like okay children if you hear go away if you okay like exit right fast there are certain things in life that I feel like humans, if it's something that you need, you just, and I'm just yeah. like, I can only imagine being a woman who enjoys the company of a nice, we're just going to say strong man. Sure. And I can't have any of that come tapping on my window pane. I also, just like, go bananas. I don't know how to get to sleep without, you know, some me time. Like, <laughs> It was, I, and also I am an only child. I never went to me sleep too. in camp. I have never. I don't. I need me time. It's important. Jenna just said, "I'm sorry. I must say this." She said, "Wait, the first time I masturbated was alone in the hotel, and I cried." <laughs> I got carpal tunnel. I got oh. carpal tunnel the second I was eliminated, and it was so funny because they were like, "I was in that hotel for two weeks." And they were like, are you okay? Do you need anything? Are you stressed out? And I was like, the only thing that stresses me out is the thought of a roommate. Do not put anyone in this room. <laughs> Do not. Because some of the other girls in the hotel were like staying in the same room together. And I was like, Do not put anyone in this room. I am watching. I have HBO Prime. I have H. I can watch softcore porn. And that's all I'm doing. Leave me alone. Like, no, no, I, was like a weird, I was like a weird masturbating ogre. Just like go. They were like, do you want to go out? Do you want to leave? Because we got like an hour a day. And I would be like, yes, I will go shopping. And then I'm going back to my hole. It was just like. <laughs> so wait, I don't, I, I don't remember where we were. What question was I, what question was I asked? Uh, I, I forgot where we were. I don't even know. Um. I guess, uh, somebody asked oh were we really that thirsty over Tyson Beckford yeah. so yes sort of but also they kind of handed up they were like isn't he attractive and would be like yes um so yes and no like we were but also you know like no one I think was like disappointed that we didn't get to make out or anything uh-huh 
Yeah. Skooma.dan wants to know, how long did that trash photo shoot take? Did they have to take the, the set for each, excuse me, let me say this again. Did they have to take down the set for each girl and set it up for the next one? I can't remember. I know it was a long day, but I don't know um, if, they, if they redid it. I do remember thinking, I was like, I know that this is about recycling, but they are wasting a lot of stuff. Because it wasn't real trash. It wasn't like you, they got like, like they emptied the bottles for the set. Like, mm, gotcha. And then they threw it all out. So I was like, this is a very wasteful shoot about recycling. Mm. <laughs> like they wasted all those trash bags, you know? Um, but they did tell me, I remember at one point they were like, yeah, you're going to be trash because you're shaped like a trash bag. No, they did not. 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 No, they yeah. did not. Yeah. And I was like, cool. I'm gonna go jump in the pile of trash bags. So I kept like jumping in them and they were like, okay, this is a set. Can you not? And I was like, Wee! And they were like, okay, we're trying to, we're trying to upset you here. And I was like, I know it's just so fun. So sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't even... And it didn't even occur to me Who at the time how bitchy that? that was. I can't remember one of the producers when they had the, they were like, how does that feel? How did it, how did, did you, did you feel bad because you were trash? And I was like, I am trash. I'm so trashy. I like potato chip sandwiches. And like, and afterwards I'm like, oh, that's mean. But at the time I was like, yeah, no, I'm trash. I'm so trash. That's why I'm pretty sure my brand is too stupid to insult. Like, I'm just like, it's whoosh. <laughs> Yeah. They were like, yeah, because you, you know, you're curvy. And so that you, you, you look like trash, you're trash. And I was like, okay. So of course I chose this photo to be your promo graphic. I, I love it. I thought it came out good. The photo came out fabulous. So mm -hmm. what was your reaction having her been say that to you at the photo shoot? And then you see this fabulous supermodel photo result. Well, it's so funny. I also like, I hated my hair at that shoot. I like asked, I don't know. I was like really afraid. I think someone, but it, cause it was right after the makeover. It was the first shoot after the makeover. And I was really nervous because in between um, the, the getting the haircut, I was like, Oh my God, I'm a rock star. I look amazing. And then someone was like, Oh, it's a mom haircut. I can't remember who, if it was like one of the girls or a producer or somebody. Be and so I was <laughs> Maybe might've been. Um, and so I was like, oh, I, uh, I was like, I, I don't want to look like a mom. And so I remember telling Christian, who was the hair guy, I was like, don't make me look like a mom. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I didn't like know how to do it. Like, I was like, I don't know how to pose with this hair. I was really nervous. And then, yeah, they were like, you're trash. But then it was just like so fun. Like it was because so, like, I don't know, photo shoot days were, if you, if you didn't think you were going home and you didn't think you were doing a bad job, they were so much fun because like the makeup crew was there and the hair crew was there. And then you got to wear these fun things and like, um, you know, and then the, if the photographer liked you, he would hype you, they would hype you up, you know, mm -hmm. they'd be like, yes, like that. So yeah. So it felt really good. And then, yeah, seeing the photo, I was like, oh, uh, I remember that might've been the first moment where I was like, oh, maybe I can know how to model. Like maybe mm -hmm. I can figure this out um because it was all yeah it was also like i don't know i don't know this is weird and i've never done it before and that was the first one where i was like okay so i'm curious to know because you blew my mind on how you auditioned for top model you were like Ish, i just went and did it and so it's a modeling competition you're progressing through 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 each photo shoot each elimination whatever 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 you're getting good feedback bad you're winning challenges being someone who's like new to this entire world where were you pulling from to help you get through the photo shoots the challenges like the modern yeah. things of it all i i got fashion magazines and i would like look at them okay. um, although they would they would always make a point of being like but remember you're not like those models you're fatter like they would always like that so that was sort of in my that would get in my head a little bit um but I never even had my photo professionally taken, which I, I say a lot and I realize it's not true. My grandparents had a friend who was a photographer and they once were like, we don't have any photos of you. When I was like 16, mm -hmm. I like had like my portrait taken. But like other than that, like never. Um, and I was actually known in high school for looking really weird in photos. 
because when I smile really big, it takes over my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they used to call me square mouth. But anyways, um, uh, so yeah, it was all very weird. And so the first time I was just so uncomfortable, but you know, having a shoot every week is a good way to learn. You just every week, mm -hmm. like, you know, and then in the mirror and also like being in a, a yeah, being in a house where no one's going to make fun of you. Like, it's hard to just go in the mirror and like do this, but when mm -hmm. it's like, that's normal and that's what you're supposed to do, you know? That makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You just, you'll be like, okay, I can do this. Like I can, you know, pose in the mirror. Um, Cause my roommates are all also models and they'll be like, aha, I will join you. Um, yeah. I still can't do runway though. Never will. I, I don't think I'll, I, I never could. So, so that runway challenge that you guys had, I believe it was the second episode, second episode oh, with, yeah. the, with the, co the contorted, restricted gowns and stuff. You, yeah. And my shoes were two sizes too small. Yikes. Oh my God. So painful. Um, yeah. And, uh, oh man. Yeah. My shoes were too small. Also, uh, one of my, they didn't, I, this never made it on the show. I think after that challenge, Tyra was like, why do you walk like that? Like, is there something wrong with you? And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, I think one of your legs is shorter than the other. So they sent me to a chiropractor um, to like get full body. Yeah. Full spine and hip and leg x-rays. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, one of your legs is shorter than the other. Um, and you're, or it's not actually my, my legs are the same length, but my hips are off. Cause I do have scoliosis. <laughs> so it was like this whole thing and it never made it on the show. Um, but yeah, they sent me to a chiropractor. He gave me like lift inserts to wear. Um, really? Yeah. And I still hated it. It didn't make it any better, but uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Louise, Louise Orozco wants to know, can you tell us a bit more about the Ebony Elimination? Wait, did that happen after I left? No, you were still there. I was still there. Oh, Don't yeah. rewrite history now. No, I'm sorry. I just couldn't remember. I know Ambriel got eliminated right after me, mm -hmm. but I couldn't remember if it was. Yeah, okay. No, you were there. Um, that's right. I was there. That's right, because I was super surprised. We were all really surprised. Um, she had been saying she missed her family, but we all did. Um, so, uh, yes, you absolutely should be laughing at this. Laugh at all of it. Um, yeah, it was just very shocking. And then, because then also you don't get to see them at all after they are eliminated. So she was just gone. We didn't get to like, be like, girl, what? Like, <laughs> um, you know, and like, if I had been able to talk to her, I would have been like, were you just doing this for more screen time? Like, was it a, was it a ploy? Did you really mean it? Like, and I know she didn't model after that. So I think she did. Um, yeah. So like from uh, your vantage point, because we've heard we've heard different different stories, and I'm I'm going to be pulling from different ones. I can't remember yeah who who, who said what who said what because I've talked to like a lot of Psycho Nine girls, but yeah. my memory is telling me like there was a moment where um, they stopped for like a long time and they had to go talk to the producers, and Ariel oh. is sitting there like crying. Oh my god! Wait, that's right. I do I do remember that Ariel must have just like. It must have been the most intense. Oh, that's right. They did. Because, yeah, to decide whether she was allowed to. Because they made a big deal about being like, you're in it. Like, you, there's no getting out. Like, once you're in, you're in. We had to sign all these contracts. That's right. And they did decide that she could go home. Someone was saying, if someone told me my leg was longer, one of my legs was longer than the other, I would lose it. I. <laughs> one of my legs. Be. Oh, thank you. Um, one of my legs is real longer though. You can see it's the right <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, sorry. Just someone said that. Like, it's not that bad. This, it's is, not that this bad. is me and you talking. Ain't nobody watching yeah. this. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just very intense. I mean, everything was intense. Um, I only saw her briefs. Oh, she's friends with Eva. That's good. That's Ooh. really good. I'm really glad. Uh, Ebony. Um, yeah, production did stop for a while. I think we did. I can't remember if we had to go when you're when they're not filming you um you're not allowed to talk it's called being on ice I think we were on ice which was so hard because it would be like yeah that's right this like huge thing happened and then it's like okay don't talk so we were just sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> it was like on makeover day we had to be on ice forever while they set everything up in the salon 
because they couldn't film us because they were setting up in the salon. So we were sitting in this room, like in the, um, like in the salon somewhere, like in the back of the salon, just like we knew we were about to get makeovers. We didn't know what we were going to get, just like sitting and rocking, like, give him a new weave. Just like, you know, give it. <laughs> I don't understand. And, you know, maybe I can talk to David about this. Um, but I'm like, if y'all, but you know what? I, ooh, so many things just went through my brain just now. And I was <laughs> answering like my own questions. So my first question was, if they already know what they're going to have you guys do, like, why do they have you girls just waiting around? Like, if they already know, okay, the, the salon opens up at 9 a.m. This yeah. is going to take X amount of time. That means yeah. we have to, we can only start setting up at X. We've only done eight seasons of this. So we should, we kind of already know what has to be set up. Why bring the girls early before everything? I don't understand. But the answer I gave was in the realm of reality TV children, and I know I've only shot one season, on a new show, but in the realm of reality TV, time does not exist. I just got a phone call. What did I get this phone call yesterday? Really, it was really yesterday, saying they need me to they need me to do something on Tuesday, and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, but I, yeah, no, I don't know. And also, yeah, the call times it's it's like crazy. But also, I know, like I, because I've worked at I've worked behind the scenes and in front of the camera, and I do know that from behind the scenes, it's like. A lot of it is just optimism where you're like, yes, we are going to start if we, we're going to have a call time at nine and then we will definitely be able to start shooting by 10 because everyone will be on time and all of the equipment will work and everyone will just sign their NDAs really quickly or like whatever it is, you know, and then everything takes forever. Um, so I think a lot of it is they would like bring us and they'd be like, we're going to start in an hour and then, you know, they would be like, oh, you know, this doesn't work or like the, the, one of the hairstylists was late or whatever it was. So I think it's a combination of factors, but yes, there was a lot of time where I'd be like, I could be sleeping. I am going to try and sleep in this fucking chair. <laughs> You're going to get me start. Okay. So back to Ebony and the elimination. I know yeah. that they're probably cursing us out right now. So like, what else do you remember from that, from that panel? So from I remember, our understanding, yeah. from our yeah. understanding, Ebony says she, Ebony said she's quitting. She wants to go home. Yeah, they stopped for a long time. What was Ebony doing during this time? Do you remember? I, I they didn't. I, I know that I didn't get to talk to her. So I think she must have. They must have kept her separate. Um, I think they kept both Ambrielle and Ebony separate, and then we weren't allowed to talk. So um, I could be wrong about that. Uh, but that's sort of what makes sense um yeah because i i just i mean ebony and i were pretty close at the time i haven't talked to her since sadly um but uh i'm gonna like talk to i'm gonna call all of them after this because i like miss them um i even still have the piece of paper we like wrote down all of our emails and phone numbers on it uh oh. at the very beginning because mm -hmm. like there was one night where we like all bonded we were like okay we don't know who's gonna get eliminated when let's just write so we all wrote it down and like we all um and so we all had it uh it was really sweet um yeah it was really crazy um and Ebony was so yeah beautiful I think I think they wanted her to go really far you know uh and I think it just wasn't fun for her I think it sucked and I don't think um I think she had you know we all had fun on shoot dates but I think maybe not the kind of thing like not enough to make it worth it I guess and I I do I wonder I don't know if they sent her home right away. She must have had to go to the hotel after she got eliminated too. I was going to ask you. Yeah. I cannot remember if she was there when I was there. Because I got eliminated right after that. Um, yeah. And so you guys didn't share a room? No, we didn't share. We definitely didn't share a room after that. I didn't share a room. I had Ambrielle and I shared a room for one night. My last night, Ambrielle was there, which was okay, because I love Ambrielle. But the whole time, like, they have you talk to the psychiatrist afterwards to, like, make sure you're okay. And she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm very afraid I'm going to get a roommate, and I don't want a roommate. But then I got to hang out with Ambrielle for a night, and it was really fun. But, um, but no, she definitely was not my roommate. And I, we did see each other occasionally, and I legit can't remember if she was there or not. I think she was. You'd have to ask Mila. Mila was there the longest. The so. longest. Okay. Yeah. 
Guys, see yeah. Mila's Instagram. It's yeah, funny too. I, somebody, somebody just sent me a picture of her and was like, can you talk to her? And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she would, re she would remember who was in the hotel. She also had a blast. She loved staying in the hotel. I'm like Kim Yeah, Kimberly was gone. I mean, she had a blast doing everything she did. Um, Kimberly was gone by the time I got there. I'm trying to think who else had been eliminated. Um, Janet. Oh, Janet was there. Yeah, I did see Janet. They Victoria. sent her home. Victoria was not there. Um, they sent her because they would send you home randomly. I was there for two weeks. Mila was there for like a month. Uh, Kim, I think, was only there for a couple days. Gotcha. Um, I cannot remember if Ebony was there or not. Uh, yeah, everyone was rooting for Ebony. It, yeah, she's, she's, I think, yeah, she just, it wasn't worth it for her. But I, I do feel like, I, cause I, I feel like I would have said something. I, you know, I, I had questions and I feel like I didn't get to ask them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Louise also wants to know, what do you feel about getting eliminated over Ariel, who had originally been eliminated the episode before? She wasn't even in the bottom two. Mm -mm. Um, it, was it was you and Chantal, Chantal, right? Yeah. <laughs> Poor Chantal. Because uh, <laughs> I just immediately started crying and she was like, what do I do? Like we hugged and I was like, ah, <laughs> go, it's fine. Just go. Mm -hmm. It was a very Jewish moment. I'm fine. I'll just sit here in the dark. Just uh -huh. go. Um, yeah, I, I had thought I was going to get eliminated that week and then wasn't in the bottom two. So then I was, so, I was like half surprised because I was like, oh, I thought I was going to get eliminated last week and now it's happening. And then half like, uh, I knew it. I, you know, I'd known it was coming. So, um, and yeah, I mean, I love Ambrielle, so I would never want to not get eliminated over her. And also I feel like she wanted it more than I do. So I felt okay about that. Um, so where did the yeah. tears come from? I have no idea. I think it was sleep deprivation. I just think I was like just tired. A, a final release, like, oh. Honestly, yeah. Just like, this is so weird and it's over and it's been so much. And it was just like, yeah just like well, yeah it just sort of hit me I think it was just like that fucking happened like the, you know I, I yeah I don't know it was really weird I, I'm I'm not a big crier spam call uh well, whatever happens yeah, I mean, you come back louder oh good okay um no, I, yeah, I, was very, so I still don't really know why I cried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, yeah, um, I cry a little more now. But at the time, I really just was, like, not a crier. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big crier now. But, like, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was real weird. Um, but I would never, yeah, I would, I want only all good things for Ambriel because she's the sweetest person in the world. Yeah, so. she was so sweet yeah. when I talked to her. So sweet. She's the best. Rose Schaefer wants to know, were you upset to hear they didn't use the ANTM models at all for Enrique Iglesias' music video? Or were you not surprised? I was not surprised because they were very purposeful in being like, now it is time to shoot the models. And then they'd be like, now it is time to do the regular shoot. Like everything that we shot, they did the regular version first, which is why that mm -hmm. day was, I don't know, 6,000 years long. Oh, um, that was the longest day and uh, yeah and it must have been so stressful um for everyone yeah and then um and then like uh, it must have just been awful also i saw enrique iglesias before like the big reveal you know they wanted to have a big reveal but i i happened to see him walking by and so they made me um like leave uh they made me like be in a separate trailer from everyone else for like hours and I hadn't had any alone time you know I'd been around people for months and I'm such an introvert that I was like oh this is amazing oh, <laughs> yeah um and then yeah so they everything that they shot they shot the, like the real version um like even Lisa's which I thought you know hers was amazing and so then they would like just swap them out um they were kind of a little bit dicks. They'd be like, okay, it's the ANTM girls time now. And we were like, oh, that oh, is yeah. mean. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I ended up actually getting into a 
teeming fight with one of the producers at the end of the day. Um, okay, Sarah, can, can you give me like five seconds? I need to run yes. and wake my boyfriend up right fast. That, I think that's sure. a perfect place to like, hold okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, that's good. I can songs while I'm gone. I'll be right yes. back, I promise. I will sing songs. I will, yes. Um, I'm also going to get some more water. Uh, I can't sing songs. I don't know why I said that. Um, I do have to pee, though. Uh, hang on. I'm going to scroll down. The what? That's so shitty. Can't mess with the Wi-Fi anymore, so she's spam calling. That's hilarious. Um, they're, they are calling. They absolutely, it was a spam call. They are calling about my car warranty. It's the last time they're going to call. <sighs> I still feel bad for Bianca during Holy Week. What's Holy Week? Go pee. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> so get some more water and pee. Um, I'm coming. Wait, where did I just put my sell your phone? I'm back. What song did you sing then? I didn't hear any tunes. Um, I sang the I, I actually sang the I have to pee song because I have to Oh, pee. how did that go? That's because I have to pee. <laughs> That's it. Did um, you go pee? I, I didn't yet, but I'm gonna. Hang on. Oh, yeah, go pee. Go pee. All right, hang on, hang on. All right. You sing a song now. Um, you can actually sing, though. That's not fair. <laughs> we were sailing along on Moonlight Bay. You can hear the whistle singing. They seem to say. You have stolen my heart and gone away as we sing our midnight song on Moonlight Bay. On Moonlight Bay. I don't know why every time somebody asks me to sing a song on live, that's the first song that comes to my head. I loved Hang Arnold. Shake your body, body, move your body, body. Shake your body, body, move your body. Y'all, can we start a shake your body challenge or whatever t on TikTok, please? We should do that. Can we start a shake your body TikTok? It's let's shake your body, body, move your body, body. Shake your body, body, move your body, body. I'm trying. Y'all, let's come up with some ideas. What will we do in the video? Of course, we have the TikTok queen here. I was just saying we should do um. We should do a shake your body TikTok dance. Oh my God. But, Wait, what like, is... but like, what would be the thing? Oh, I don't know. It has, it has to have like a thingy. Yeah. I always see people on TikTok do like this, like where they just lean back and shake. <laughs> <laughs> and they look like Muppets. Wait, so could it be like you like randomly doing something and it could just be silence and then shake your body comes on and you just start randomly shaking wherever oh, you are. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the opposite of Harlem Shake. No, I guess that is Harlem. Sort of like Harlem Shake. Y'all, let's think about this. Yeah. They said, they said, they said like the mic, lick the mic, but replace <laughs> it with different things. Oh, yes. Her, that microphone Ooh. lick is iconic. When that bitch was on her back arching and that microphone was dangling in her mouth like a, Hey, yeah. I, was, I said, sing, Tara, sing. Sing from your gut. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, that's right. What do you mean? Tyra Banks' is brief, uh, just some bread. Um, Tyra Banks' is brief recording career. <laughs> uh, short-lived, you know? Very much so short-lived. I don't think the train yeah. ever left the station. No, nope. not everybody can be good at everything. She's good at a lot of things, you know? I like that song, though. Right, it's not bad, yeah. I and I like, like the break, and I like the breakdown. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, but she never. She, did she? Or actually, I don't know. Did she ever sing the top model theme song? No, that's not her. Yeah, uh, mm -mm. she may she may do a couple outlets, but that's a girl by the name of. Um, she's on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I can't think of her name right now. Oh. Lit I, it's not Lyrica Anderson. I can't think of her name right now, but she still, she posts her check. She still gets from singing that, that theme song. Like she still gets a lot of money till this day. Go for her. I know. At least um, somebody, at least somebody got something residual from the whole thing. Truly. Um, that's why, like looking back, I'm like, if they had paid us, that would have made it so much more worthwhile. <laughs> Can you imagine how much money you guys would have with top model being binge watched and syndicated in so many different countries? Y'all would be some yeah. rich bitches. Yeah, that's what I would do differently if I went back, is I would be like, uh, pay me. 
<laughs> um, yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, Rihanna sang ours. It was that Shut Up and Drive song. Shut, yeah, Shut that, that, that was you guys' promo. Mm -hmm. That's one yeah. promo I vividly remember in my brain. Yeah. Because I remember, wait, because I remember Tyra, because I remember the song, the, the, the song will be playing, and I remember Tyra Banks saying something. It was like, it'll be like the music will play, and it'll be like cut suddenly, and Tyra will be like, something, something. The next something, something. The Boom. next generation. Da -da 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 yep. Yeah. We did shoot the promos before anything else, like before we even started. Like that was one of the first things that happened. And that day was so crazy because we were all in heels so high that people had to walk us places. Like we couldn't walk in them. They were like point shoes almost. Mm. And then that was a good learning experience because that was really the first photo shoot we ever did. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really fun. And we were What's all like, there? I cannot remember. No, no. Or she might have been, we might have seen her briefly, but not really. Um, they photoshopped us all together. We all did like individual shots. They never did like a big group shot. Mm -hmm. um, the future of modeling is now. That's, that's, right. that's what it was. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Of modeling, modeling is now. Is yeah, now. because you guys' promo were like future. It was all white. You guys mm -hmm. had silver thing. Yes. Thank you guys so much. And we like wore mesh amazing. chain stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then she was also like in the promo. She's like, this season, I cast girls where you're like, she's a model. Yeah, she's a model. <laughs> The future of modeling is future here. Modeling Boom! Is yeah. 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 Yep. Top model was such a phenomenon. I mean, still oh is, God. but yeah. I used to be so excited to see the new batch of girls and like what the theme was, what the intro would look like, what the promo yeah. was like. That it, top model was a thing for me yeah. at least. Oh my God, that's right. The call time for the promo shoot was like 3 a.m. I bet. Like, yeah, we had to get there at, like, 3 a.m. It was still dark out. Yeah, we had people, like, walking us everywhere. It was insane. I was wearing, like, a chain dress, so I couldn't really sit. When the hell did the girls get to go to sleep? Never. We did not sleep. That's what I'm saying. We were so tired. We were so sleep-deprived. Because <laughs> also, the, even when we did get to sleep, A, we couldn't masturbate. B, that we were all together. Uh, and I don't, I'm not great at sleeping when there's other people. I know that I snored. Uh, I'm so curious to know... And, you know, ever since Jenna's interview, I've always wanted to ask the girls these questions, but I don't want to offend anybody. Oh, you but I'm so me. curious to know. No, not even you, just but just oh. the girls in general. I'm curious to know, like, were there any scissoring sisters during the cycle? I've always wanted to know that, like, too. Not like, during you know, ours that I know of. Like, it's almost like we're in jail. It's like, you know, girl, we in here together. You help me. I help you. You tickle me. I tickle you. <laughs> I know. I never did during ours, we but <laughs> yeah, it, I feel like it's not quite long enough. Like if it was like a year, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, cause like uh, like Jenna, me, Lisa. I think we were the only queer ones, but um, yeah, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lisa, it. I at the time identified as bi. Um, I don't know if if she's. I assume she still does. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. If it ever happened, yeah, I wonder, girl, you know, we... though, because I would be if it if it were I if it were I, I would always have been so afraid that they would like exploit it or like try to make it a thing. You know, like I would be afraid to hook up with anybody because I'd be like, I don't want to, I don't want to like. You don't want that pressure. I don't want that pressure to then be like, yes, we're together and we love each other. It'd be like oh, I just wanted to put my mouth on her mouth. You know what I mean? Like it would be too. I don't. I would never want to add cameras to a hookup unless it was like you know for funsies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Henry Ferrari wants to know: during your elimination, Tyra said you didn't fit in the industry because you weren't skinny yet. You weren't skinny yet. You weren't fully plus size, even mm -hmm. though you went through auditions and castings previously. How did it feel about it back then? And what are your thoughts about it now? And I also want to ask you, did you actually lose weight while you were on the show? I lost three pounds. I I'm 5'11". I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I remember them talking about it so much and me being like, I guess it's showing like a lot. I lost three pounds. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, wait. Wait. Go ahead and finish that. Go ahead and finish okay. that. Okay. No, I, they, they talked about it like a, a bunch at eliminations and I was always like, I, I'm not losing that much weight. Like I'm not dieting. I'm not doing anything like, um, yeah, but yeah, someone was saying sleep deprivation will make you lose weight. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Um, 
but and they kept being like is it the pressure is it the pressure of living with all these skinny girls and I was like if anything it's the pressure that they steal my food because they don't know how to cook <laughs> it was like me Jenna and Janet and one other girl sort of knew how to cook and none of the other girls did and there wasn't a microwave and like <laughs> so uh it was like we all had to like bake hot pockets um and like yeah fish sticks and stuff um so yeah it was I, I did not lose a lot of weight I don't know and they, they did make a big deal about it I, I even specific I'm not going to say the numbers um because I yeah people are weird about hearing what people weigh but I, I do specifically remember that it was three pounds Ooh. yeah the people and then are- and then I quit after the show I was the same size and I worked in the plus size industry for years successfully and it was fine I had agents I did catalogs all over the world um so and do you think that just goes back to what they wanted to talk about in regards to your character on the show? This weight thing, yeah. her not being comfortable. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, yeah, they wanted, or maybe they were just, maybe they were like, we tried, we tried everything with her. We tried to, to like stir up conflict between her and Lisa. We tried to cut off her hair. We tried to call her fat. She won't like be dramatic. Are you losing weight? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe also the only money we got was for food so i would try and get really um cheap food so i was like maybe it's because i'm living off of iceberg lettuce and refried beans but yeah so the people are screaming in the comments asking us to revisit the story that we put a pin in before we just ran away from the screen about the producer fight they won't let me live it down oh oh okay yeah so um heather you know, got really lightheaded on set. And, um, and I, you know, she kind of fell over, she like slumped over and I was like, are you okay? And, um, and she was like, no. So they, they halted production. They got her off set. And that's when, you know, that they shot the like regular stuff without us for a while. And I really felt that she should go to a hospital because, um, she like vomited twice. Her eyes rolled back in her head. She lost consciousness again. Um, and then she was kind of like frothing a little at the mouth. Oh no. Yeah, I now know I think that she just had pretty severe heat stroke. And so it's possible that the medics did, I'm sure that the, me- I know that the medics knew more than I did. Like they, you know, they had more, but I just really felt that she should go to a hospital because it was really scary. Um, and she seemed really unwell. Um, and, and they were like, no, 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 she's fine. We're just going to give her some Gatorade. And I was like, I, I feel like, it was the eyes rolling back in the head and like, she just was like shaking. And I was like, you know, and I know that like her, I just, I'd like talked to her mom, you know, like a couple days before. And she was like, you know, watch out for my baby. And so I just, I felt so protective of her. And I really just was like, I, I need her. I need you to take her to a hospital. Um, and they were like, I need you to let the medics do their job, which is fair. They had medics. Um, but you know, they weren't doctors. And I just, I was like, at least like, can we get a doctor to look at her? Um, and it escalated and ended up being like a screaming fight. Um, yeah. I can't remember who it was a short guy. <laughs> um, it wasn't Ken Mock, right? I don't think so. I don't, I, I, I don't remember. It was a man. Um, but I, I don't remember. And it was a couple people. Um, and I think also, like, you know, I'd been on ice, and I was just, like, frustrated. Uh, but, yeah. Um, Turn she wasn't, up, like, Sarah. If you were frothing at the mouth. I felt like, too, it wasn't, like, frothing, frothing. I think she had really, she had really intense um, heat stroke, I think, is what it was. And so, yeah, like, hydrating. And she was okay, uh, I think, after that. Um, you know, she was like fine. She lived. Uh, and Sarah, this is the same week you got eliminated, right? <laughs> it is. My friend is convinced seen? this is why. I know. My friend is convinced this is why. They were like, you yelled at a producer, like, but I don't think they would send you home because you yell. I, if anything, I feel like they would be like, oh, she can do drama, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> or maybe they, maybe he was really upset. Um, she did look like she was convulsing. I and I was like, if she like. She doesn't have epilepsy. Like she, you know, you would know that. You have our full medical history. Like there's something wrong. Um, 
It did not make it. I'm going to tell you, someone was like, oh, I have to go back and watch. It, none of the fight made it. No, on of course not. Uh, and I don't even, I don't even think, I think the producer like wouldn't, didn't want them to film. Um, that yeah, moment. that's so, no, one of my very best friends is like, convinced that that's why they sent me home I, mean, I don't know i could see i could definitely see that i could definitely definitely see that yeah i feel like if it, i don't know if if it were me i would have been like oh so she can get upset like we just have to like she's just protective over the other girls because i was i was i felt very uh i felt very protective of heather um and uh yeah so let me ask you this is it safe to assume that you were not a decoy for china but you didn't go to China. I didn't go to China, no. Gotcha. Um, no, which I I was bummed about at the time. Because um, I, you know, I've, I've always wanted to go everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. I've always just wanted to travel. Um, but it sounds like it kind of sucked. Yeah. 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 I've had um, some off live conversations with some Cycle 9 girls. They were like, yeah, China wasn't. It sounds it like it was fun. Rough. Yeah. And I could totally see, like, if you add, like, if you took the equation of what I experienced in America and took it with also dealing with, like, a whole other country and a very different culture and food and, um, and just custom, like, just having to, like, navigate all that would be really hard. Um, yeah. Uh, I always wondered, though, what I was curious, I'm always, I've always been curious about how the castings work, because they had a whole ass team around them. Like, they were wandering around, but they had, they must, right? Because there's a camera crew. Yeah. So there must have been at least four four people, right? Because there's a camera guy. There's usually a sound guy. There's usually, uh, like, a camera assistant. And then there's usually someone, like, checking the shot. So maybe, like, a, yeah. And usually there's, like, an associate producer mm -hmm. as well and a PA. So there must have been, like, five, you know. But I always wondered about that. I guess they just don't say anything. Mm. Um, yeah. So this is Ooh. Alyssa underscore Mariah saying, hi, Sarah, who was your favorite judge and who was your least favorite judge? Ingmas Day was my favorite. Because, uh, yeah. An alarm and I got to um, Yeah. Because they're just really, they were just really nice and mm -hmm. fun and, and dramatic but like in a fun way you know <laughs> like um like I remember once like they were bugging me about the weight thing and they were like um who you know are you losing weight and I was like I don't think so I'm not even really thinking about what I'm eating mm -hmm. and she was like that's all it takes and I was like that's all it takes tell the diet industry <laughs> right just don't yeah. think about it don't think oh just don't it. think about it um and uh yeah and then I think uh, yeah my least favorite was Twiggy Twiglet, okay. I'm sure she's great. I'm sure I'm she has lots sure. of strength. I'm pretty sure. But, yeah. Um, she just. Sidness ninety nine wants to know: Do you have a favorite moment that was left on a cutting room floor? Something that was captured on camera but we did not see. Oh, um, it's a tie. One, we all sat in a circle and we were all talking about our our favorite sexual experience. And we had like a quiz that we would ask everybody. And it was like, you know, what position do you like? What was your most, like, what was the most romantic or like, you know, like what was the hottest thing you ever did? Um, like, have you ever done it in public? Um, and I won that one because I had really strict parents. So I did it in so many cars. Um, <laughs> not too bright. Uh, <laughs> Going to the drive through tonight, guys. <laughs> oh my God, legit went to a drive through Uh and he got his parents' van for that one. So we have room. Ooh, scooby dooby doo where yeah. are you? Yeah. Also, I did it in the, also the same guy, we did it in the, a fire extinguisher room in a parking garage in Providence, Rhode Island. But I think that might've been after the show. Um, uh, I've also done it in a New Orleans cemetery. Oh, no, Sarah. I know. I'm haunted. <laughs> you weren't scared? No, it was during the day. Still. I know. Now I would be, but at the time I was like, yeah. I know. Just, oh. There are all these ghosts watching me. Like, I know. No. Mm -mm. Well, also, real people. Like, I've, I've been to that cemetery since. I was actually in New Orleans last year and I was like, oh, someone saw us. Like, there's no way. Now, yeah. Sarah, I'm curious to know, girl. Now, you got to tell me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. 
Because I've been to cemeteries during the day and at night, and ain't nothing erotic about a goddamn cemetery and old know. granite and dying grass and flowers. I know. Set us I up very like, quickly on, uh, on the, the scene and we was like, this I was is like, going to go this way now. I was like 17. You know, oh, I was okay. young enough that like anything is romantic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like rubbing up against a chair the wrong way is like, but, oh, oof. that's romantic. You know, like, <laughs> We were so young that it was just like, yeah, um, that we, young and stupid. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And then so for favorite moments that didn't make it, that was it. We, yeah, we used to just have like fun conversations in the closet, in, but we had them in the walk-in closet. So it was harder to film. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of glad that didn't make it on air. And then the other thing that I'm sad didn't make it um, was the chiropractor visit because it was just such a whole thing i was like this mm -hmm. is such a whole thing it feels like it should be like a whole arc and a storyline mm -hmm. and i could and then it just never they were like eh because it's kind of boring <laughs> what are your feelings so, on your storyline like and how they edited you on the show i don't know i gotta rewatch. i don't honestly. remember you being so funny and like i wasn't i don't remember i that. wasn't i was i was so nervous all the time and just so like what is happening that I wasn't so I want to rewatch but um yeah I, w I was so also I was just so painfully shy and it's so funny I hung out with Jenna a couple years later and she was like it's so weird when we talk online and like when I see you you're so animated but right now you're like very quiet like why you know like what's going on and I was like honestly I think seeing you reminds me of the show and mm -hmm. so I don't know how to act <laughs> And so, like, I don't know how to, like, and it took a while before I could, like, kind of open up around people who were related to the show. Like, I remember I ran into a girl at a casting, Alexandra, and I immediately just clammed up and felt so uncomfortable and awkward. Mm. And, like, Whitney and I hung out a bunch, and it took forever before I could, like, be... Whitney the winner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before so she moved to Tennessee and started a restaurant. That's so funny that you asked because my next question, no lie, mm -hmm. is from um, Raymond Targaryen. <laughs> if you watch the rest of other cycles, who is your favorite representative for the fiercely real contestants? And do you oh. think Whitney should have won? Do you think you will still stand a chance against her if you guys were competing in the same cycle? Oh. Uh, well, I modeled for a little longer than her. So yeah, if we competed like after, maybe I would have a good chance. Um, I think it depends. Um, it's hard because modeling was never my passion. And I don't know if it was hers either. But uh, I think that, you know, it helps to be really passionate about mm -hmm. it. Um, and it was always like a fun day job that got me, you know, to travel cool places. And it was like very cool, but it wasn't like the thing you know like it wasn't like the driving like you know like you do a bunch of things right like you do these you do music you're on tv like even when you have a bunch of passions it's like you see how much of a difference it makes you know yeah and like yeah and you do other projects to feed those right but like the ones that you know like I mean, you're I, yeah and correct me if I'm wrong it seems like you are someone that like yeah is totally willing to explore new things and try new projects but like has a driving like mm -hmm. force yeah um yeah I just love to create creating just makes me happy like I just get my, yeah. my rocks off of like just taking something from nothing and making it something like that makes me yeah excited. yeah mm -hmm. um and you can apply that to so many things but mm -hmm. when you're not in charge and you're not the one and that's the thing about modeling is like I would go to set and you know, the makeup artist would create a look and the stylist would create a look and then the photographers and they would create this look and then all I, I would go on and they'd be like, you know, act natural. <laughs> and you're like, nah, well, all right. So, yeah. You're, you're, I always felt like I was the least creative person on mm -hmm. set. So I like, yeah, I also like, you know, creating things. Right. Um, so Matthias Chu is asking, how did you get into comedy? Oh, I got into comedy <laughs> because <laughs> I got into comedy because of an event that was hilarious. Um, it was a wrestler's birthday um, and he had a roast. And so we had all of his friends um, roast him and including me. And he also had some stand-up comedians 
this is the yeah uh the most recent thing um and it was amazing and i loved it and it was so much fun and um and i met a comedian there who was like cool i'll take you to some open mics and when i was 17 i had come to new york with my mom for christmas and we had all these plans of going to like St. Patrick's Cathedral at 7 a.m. on Christmas morning. And then instead on Christmas Eve, we went to a drag bar, a drag queen put my head up her skirt. Um, <laughs> and, and then we went to uh, the comedy cellar and it was Christmas Eve. And I remember after the show, I saw all these comedians hanging out. And this is so funny to me now, because I now know that they're all very broken and fucked up people. <laughs> but at the time I was like, they look so happy. Um, like they look like if you can be at work on Christmas uh -huh. Eve and feel so happy and be laughing and uh -huh. like feel good about it, then that must, you must love, that must be a beautiful job to have. Right. Um, sure. And now I know that they're very, un you know, I know some of those people, I even remember them. One was Sherrod Small uh, and he is a happy person, but, um, but like, you know, it was a very naive viewpoint of what comedians at a comedy club on Christmas Eve would, would be like. But uh, so, yeah, I've always loved comedy. I've always loved Carol Burnett was my favorite show growing up. Um, I loved Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin. Um, yeah, Red Skelton. Um, everything. So I've just always loved it. But then, yeah, after, after the show, um, I got hired. Not hired, but like I was doing this roast to be like sort of a celebrity appearance. And I was like, I'm going to do this. So then, yeah, that that's uh, that that's its history. And so, like now, tell, I mean, tell everybody what you do. Like you tour. You like, like, what is your what is your life as to? a working comedian? I used to tour. Now I more just make. I I tour with Abortion Access Front, um, and yeah, we go around the country, and we or we used to visit abortion clinics, and then do and then do comedy shows. Um, and then yeah, hopefully I will also do some, you know, just by myself and do. I, you know, when I'm in New York, I perform, um, or I used to, and once I get the vaccine, I will again. Um, and yeah, I mean, now it's very different. Now it's more, you know, making TikToks and, um, and writing jokes and stuff. But in the before times, yeah, we used to go put on shows, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, do comedy. Uh, it's actually been kind of nice to have a year off, like, and just okay. doing other things, you know, I say that I miss it so much. I can't, it's like, I miss it so much I can't even think about it too much because mm -hmm. like it was yeah it was ev everything I it was everything I did all the time mm -hmm. but um but it has been nice to like you know have some time off and like write stuff and yeah make stupid TikToks and I like TikTok because you can like sort of be sincere and like nice and sweet and funny um yeah I, I'm, uh, I'm gonna ask you about TikTok because you're like mm -hmm. TikTok famous how many <laughs> followers do you have how many views have you gotten Oh, um, I don't know how many views I've gotten, but I have 82,000 followers. Um, if you, if anyone watching, please go follow me. Uh, I love it. I just, yeah, I love TikTok. I, I know people make fun of it and people like say that it's just for kids. I'm definitely too old to be on there, but I don't know. I learned, I've learned so many recipes. Like <laughs> my whole TikTok for you page is cute animals and food. And it's amazing. Cause that's mm -hmm. the thing is like, it just caters to you. Like, whatever you want to see is what it shows you. So it shows me hot lesbians uh, cooking <laughs> and, um, and thirst trapping. And then, yeah, uh, cute, cute puppies um, and animals. And, like, yeah, and hot men in the country having farms. That's, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Love to see it. So, like, how has it been for you being TikTok famous? Like, <sighs> like I mean, no, you are TikTok. You are I don't TikTok know. Famous. I feel like it's such a weird it's so weird because I don't think like it still feels so intimate like I still like all the comments are still like converse you know like fun conversation my, in my head when you're like famous it's like you don't inter you don't you're not like interacting with individuals but like I love everyone who comments on my videos and we have like fun bits like I have this bit called um Antifa like Antifa but it's like an, your auntie mm -hmm. um who's like a midwestern aunt but also antifa <laughs> so like <laughs> she's like very sweet and she loves you so much and like let's go overthrow the patriarchy um 
And like whenever someone comments and like doesn't get it, like I know exactly who's gonna go explain it to them. And like when I make a video about top model, there's a million people who are like, what cycle? And I always know who's gonna be like, she's on cycle nine, it's in her bio. And I'm like, there you are, I love you. Uh -huh. like, you know? Mm -hmm. and no, like, I definitely can relate, definitely. Yeah, it just feels like individuals that I like know and love. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas Instagram is like overwhelming and I'm like, I don't know who these people are. Really? I'm like trying to. Because Instagram Reels is just, I'm not used to it yet. It's just because I'm not used to it yet. Mm, but Instagram gotcha. Reels is weird. And there were just so many comments and I was like, wait, but you're, I don't know you. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did you like, and it's great. I, I love it. But um, yeah, I just want to, every time someone comments, I want to be like, hi, who are you? What's your deal? Like, right. Who are you? Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Um, well, listen, yeah. my sweet Sarah, I don't have any more questions for you. Okay. But I'm going to turn it over to the fans. Now, guys, I have four badges. Miss Sarah Ooh. has spilled enough tea. Y'all really don't need to be asking her a lot of questions. However, you guys know, get a badge, and I will ask her your question live. Oh. I'll only one question per person so we can get through it. But we've been on here for a long time, and it's a lot of tea that she has spilled. A lot. I did. Trust me, I it's did. a lot. If you came to class late, you're gonna have to rewatch this when I post it on YouTube because it was a lot, a lot, a lot of things that had my heart going pitter patter. Pitter -patter. Yeah. You know what, Sydney, Sydney's ninety nine. She always asks me this question for every person, and I'm like, Sydney, why you want to know this? But I'm gonna ask you. What? Because you're knowledgeable. Who would you rather lip sync against, the Jays, Miss J, and Mister and Mister J, or Raja? For Who? Suton. Well, it depends on if I want to win. I, I want to see Raja lip sync. So, right? I want, but that, if, if I mm -hmm. could see that, I would, because they're amazing. I, I you know, um, but I feel like I would, you know, you know what? I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win against either of them. So I'm just going to say Raja because I, because I know that they, it would be a beautiful performance to see. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I love makeup. I love, I love everything about drag. I could never. I can't it do a flip. Hard. I can't. I can't do any of that. So I would be losing if it was if it was a competition. I would lose no matter what. Mm. But, um, the only one that I might have a chance against would be Mr. J because I feel like he doesn't do drags. But I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So it depends so, on if I want to win or if I want to watch. <laughs> so it's Mall eighty six is asking: Did okay. Twiggy say more to Victoria than what was shown? I don't know. I, I, I would have to rewatch because I can't remember what they showed, but it was just a lot of like, you seem very prickly. Um, Yikes. She did once, oh, I, I don't know if this, this probably made it on when she was like, I just am a little bit afraid of you. Mm -hmm, she did say that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then, no, I think, I think most of it maybe made it on. Um, mm -hmm. It did sometimes feel a little bit like they were ganging up on her. I don't know if that came across. I really, I'm going to have to rewatch because I can't remember what they, what they aired. Y'all, was it was it Victoria getting eliminated when she took off her shoes and everyone thought she was gonna throw it at Tyra? In <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> That's right, and she just hated wearing heels. And also, you had to wear them. I mean, the, it was like twelve hour days, and you were standing for so long, and so our feet would be killing us. Um, so yeah, she just took them off because she was like sick of wearing them because it had been hours. Do, do you remember security like moving in? I don't, I didn't, I don't. I remember like, I actually, I think I thought it was a joke. I think we, I thought we were joking, but I guess mm -hmm. they really, that's so funny. Um, I, I don't, I can't even, I had honestly forgotten that there was security on set, but that's right, there totally was. Um, that's funny. Nothing was gonna happen, nothing was gonna happen. Entirely. I don't know, gonna happen. yeah. Also, it's hard to convey, Victoria was so thin and so small. She was just like the, like not, she might not have actually been frail, but she looked, fra she just was like the tiniest, mm -hmm. like, just, like, Tyra's quite thin, um, and Victoria was like one of her legs. Like, it was, you know, yeah. She don't mind to do nothing. Jenna, no, you don't have to get another badge. Once you get a badge, it pops up, the badge pops up next to your name, and I can see it. Um, oh, Jenna, you want to do another one? Maybe we can do a joint Cycle 9 chat. I can see how many girls I can get on that one time. That'd be fun. fun. Um, K. Dot Young wants to know, hi, Sarah, this live has made you probably my fave A&TM contestant ever. 
What's the best thing you were able to learn from Top Model? Great question, K. Dot Young. I mean, everything about modeling that I learned. Um, which, to be fair, you, it's not like we had to ever model. Like in real life, you know, you're not modeling strong. Uh, you, I never rock climbed again at a modeling mm -hmm. shoot. I never was on top of a building. Um, you know, with a snake wrapped around my head. And it's not like, it's not that dramatic in real life. Mm -hmm. um, although I did catalog. High fashion models have some horror stories. Um, I bet. I did one shoot that was kind of cold. And mm -hmm. they wrapped us in, you know, they wrapped me in blankets in between shots. So like, but um, yeah, I mean, just, just that plus size modeling existed, that it was a thing I could do. I did it for seven years after the show and I never, it had never even occurred to me to be a model before the show. So mm -hmm. yeah. And also meeting the other girls. Nice. Um, oh, and that I was bisexual. Man, I learned a lot on the show. Yes, you learned, learned a lot. Erin mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sketch is asking, have you spoken to Ebony since the show, especially um, since you all were roommates, were you affected by her exit? Now, before you answer, now, I don't like y'all who come to my class late and you begin to ask these questions that if your ass was sitting in your seat when the thing said it was starting, I don't give a damn if I'm late or if anybody's like, you be on time. Because Miss Sarah did answer both of these questions, but go ahead, Miss Sarah. I did. I have not talked to her since the show, but uh, only because I think she, yeah, she has not been in the public eye at all. Um, so I, yeah, I've respected her, her wishes. Um, not like she was specifically like get away from me but you know she she was not part of the of the world and so um yeah but I would love to I love her she's amazing but no so um guys who are watching if you got a badge go ahead and put your question down in the live chat I'll see a pop-up and as you guys type your last um questions Miss Sarah I have a question for you if okay. you were in front of Tyra Banks right now in 2021 okay. what would you say to her um, I, who, honestly, I would ask her, um, I would ask her how it's been knowing that a lot of the top model moments have come under fire. Um, and I think that that, you know, I think it's fair. They should like putting girls in blackface, like the, just the layers of a, of a show run by a black woman, mm -hmm. putting girls in blackface for high fashion oh it's it's a, a real clusterfuck hey! no! Jenna! Yes! shut up you're beautiful always um yeah i would ask her if she regrets it i guess does she regret it yeah because i think you know it was a different time but like not that different <laughs> also the gap thing i guess that's what people always ask about the gap tooth all like the, I guess the they put a gap in some controversial two. thing. Yeah. Like, does she, does she have any regrets? I'm sure, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's an obvious question. Um, yeah. And also, it felt like she was very in control. And was mm -hmm. that true? It felt like it was her world. Mm -hmm. Was that true? Or was did she true? feel, was she answering to, like, did she feel like she had to answer that's to somebody? That's a good question. Like, did it feel like she had to appease to the producers or the audience or like what, where was she coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at Jenna right now, y'all. And Jenna, J Jenna's hair is cascading to the side. She is glowing. Jenna, Always. what did you just do? <laughs> what did you just do? J Hi. Look at Sarah. Hi. <laughs> Bye, Jenna. I wasn't ready. I know you weren't ready. You gotta stay ready. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'm like turning towards the light because she, she looks. I was so like, happy. I want to glow. I wonder if she just go. hanging. There we go. Getting, getting some. It's golden hour here, so <laughs> light on my face. Freaking freezing, but the light's beautiful. Oh, Lordy, I could have took that joke so many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I got you, Aaron. Sketch. I'm just scrolling through. Sarah, you did an amazing job. Thank you for having a thank you. To stay on here for almost three hours with me talking about this shit that happened. Oh my no, God. thank you, thank you for yeah having me on for three hours. Oh my God, I, you are. I can't believe you are a champ and a half. I, I like. 
Truly, you are so good at this. It's really, oh, it's amazing. Thank y'all. <laughs> no, no, um, yes. Again, guys, I know you guys can't see. First of all, you know, I love shirts and things that um, accentuate my man boobies. So you guys, when you guys rewatch this, you will see me from time to time do like this in the shirt <laughs> because I just, it's, it's, it's something about that that I, Whoa, just like, yeah. I just like yeah. to see me look it, like this. But anyway, guys, great. Sarah sent me this shirt for my birthday and I'm so yeah. grateful. I cackled when I read the caption. Sarah, plug, I want you to plug everything that you're doing and anything okay. that you want the kitties to know, starting yeah. with this shirt. Um, follow me here. If you want that shirt, the link is in my bio. Just click on merch. It'll take you. I have a couple things. Um, I'm going to show y'all the shirt. Keep talking. Follow me here. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm trying to think. I have some shows coming up, but they're all like corp they're all like corporate gigs or school gigs. So they're not mm -hmm. public. Um, but I post about it all on my Instagram. Instagram is the best way to find out about shows and stuff. Um, yeah. And click through um yeah i donated all the proceeds from my shirts in 2020 to bail funds i haven't decided what i'm gonna do in 2021 i might it's in 2021 <laughs> might do like 50 50 i don't know i haven't decided um but uh yeah but i have some cute shirts and stuff and just posting just you know keep following me uh and i'll i'll yeah I'm working on a bunch of stuff, but it's all like excellent. Yep, excellent angles. Oh, it looks so cute on you though. Look at no, those I shoulders. Love it. Oh my god! I get to show my arms Very cute. out. Did, did yeah. you have tattoos? I did. I knew because I've seen I've seen this one. Oh, what is it? This is what's, Kore what's this, this is Korean for God protect God provides. Nice. This is Hebrew. Why god Korean? With me. This is Arabic for God um, protects me, and this is Korean for God provides. Did you pick those languages for a reason, or oh, I just have a thing for languages that look like characters. Oh, mm -hmm. I love I think, it. I think I I think I thought about the girl from um, what's that Disney movie where they're like in a God dog? Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. She had gray hair. And at the end of the movie, she touched the thing and all the inscriptions on her body like lit up. Oh. What is it called? It's an old time. Right um, oh, it's, I don't know. Can y'all help me out? What's the name of that? At, at, at this, uh, let's see. They were like an adventure. They were like an adventure group. Like a, come on, y'all. The adventurers? No. Um, Nope. Atlantis. Yeah. There we go. Atlantis. Oh, I never saw that. Um, I'm gonna watch it now though. Yeah. Oh, I gotta take cool. some nice photos in this so you can I'm sitting. Yes. I um I, I took Russian just because I like the Cyrillic alphabet. Really? That's what I was doing before the show was studying to be a Russian translator. <laughs> and then I forgot all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely order in a restaurant. Was, um studying music at, at college. I didn't like the Russian language. No. It's a it, it, well. I lo I love the alphabet. I actually I like the Russian language, but it is hard. It's like yeah, thirty two characters and very weird. Sarah, is there anything? Didn't have an Is there anything else you would love to add to your A and TM exclusive on Cycle Nine? Uh no. I just want to say thank you everyone for watching and asking good questions and stuff. And this was yeah, it was so fun. Thank you so much. No, I want to thank you so much again for doing this with me for almost three hours. This was pretty amazing. You said I got the bandwidth. No, you got the bandwidth because you were doing most of the talking. So kudos to you. Kudos thank to you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank so you. For being so sweet to me. Listen, guys, Sarah always messages me. She's always talking to me. She's always checking in. She's very sweet. Like everything you see here is not yeah. an act. She's very sweet because I felt her energy through the phone. She's very sweet. Make sure you guys go follow her on everything. Go Thank patronize you. her. Um, and I cannot wait to meet you when I come to New York City. What part of New yes. York? Yes. Huh? What part of New York City are you in? I live in Harlem. What? What? Where? I live in yeah, in East Harlem. 
So Harlem is like the only part of New York City that I know because one of my best friends yeah. lived up there for a long time after he graduated college. So and he he just would move around Harlem. So I kind of yeah. like know like I know the trains and like oh. like I know like one twenty second Street very well. Oh um, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. I love Harlem. It's where I first started doing comedy in the city. Um, was yeah, it was all it was all over Harlem and um, yeah, it's like where I got my got my kind of comedy teeth and um, I love it. Uh, yeah I can't wait I can't wait to be able to do it again um yeah do you know Shandy from cycle two of America's Next Top Model she lives in Brooklyn but I feel like oh. we'll be great friends I don't but I I don't yeah oh I know I think I know of her but I've no I've never I've never met her I don't talk I, I don't know a lot about um like other yeah from other cycles other than Whitney um but and Marvita but she was sort of on our cycle too so um and she's the best yeah. Oh, somebody just corrects uh -huh. me. They said 125. Okay, I don't know. I don't live there. But I just know if you drop me in Harlem, New York right now, bitch, I know how to get around. I mean, there is a 122nd Street. Um, there's a lot of good restaurants on there. It's a thing. Yeah, see, oh. th thank you for saying that because I'm like, I know one, I know 122nd for a specific reason. I know yeah. where the Popeyes is. I know, I know where that's to get on one twenty fifth. But yeah, that's yeah. on one twenty fifth. Okay, so let me yeah. ask. But something is on. Is is the train on one twenty second? One twenty fifth is the main. It's like the main drag of Harlem, sort of. Yeah. One twenty fifth um, has the um the Sephora. It has all, yes. All, yes, I remember one twenty fifth. It has the um because I I had a book looking look I had got a booking like a hosting booking, and I didn't have any clothes or nothing like that. I took my ass to um to one twenty fifth. And I went to um, Sephora, and she did my makeup right fast. And then I went to um, City Trends on One Twenty Fifth, the two story uh, one. And yeah, I got yeah, my yeah. outfit, and nobody yeah, knew and what then, You know where it's also amazing is uh, Doctor J's. So Dr. J's, good. yes. You can occasionally like they have like you know they have great cheap stuff, but then occasionally they'll just have like some designer crap, and you're like, did this fall off a truck? Like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Anyways, my husband is looking at me like he really wants to walk in the kitchen right now. <laughs> So I think I gotta go. Hi, how's it? Um, so I think I should probably go. Um, but this was amazing. Thank you so much. Come up to Harlem. We could, oh my God, we could have so much fun. I used to be in New York so much before the pandemic. So much. I was in Atlanta right before, but just once. But I want to come again. Mm -hmm. Of course, anytime you come, of course, my door is always open. And when I yes. come to New York City, I'm bamming on all you bitches' doors. Bam, bam, bam. Open it up. Yes. Okay. Yay. We Sarah, go to Brooklyn. Again. I know you have to go, but thank you so much. Everybody send Sarah love, hugs, and kisses. <laughs> mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Now playing around with Sarah, I kind of like this angle. Because I can give body and I can be perched. And I can be. Mm. But you know what? I, I won't be able to see none of y'all thingies. Oh, hold on. Let's get off this. I think the thing is, it, I see a thing swirling and girling. Listen, y'all, this video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel, oliverthwigs.com. I mean, uh, bitch, I'm fucking up speaking because I don't want this live to go down. Listen, be sure to pray and kegel, okay? Let's go. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. See y'all later. Uh-uh. Don't. I Zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like.